minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Trap Talk, Reptile Network, coolest reptile network in the world, episode 478, All in the Tree Tuesdays. Dennis, Big Mac, McNamara from DJM Reptiles tonight. What's good, everyone? I'm your boy, MJ. Uh, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time hanging out with us, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let's get the likes up right now. It's a free feature. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Select all. When you do that, you get reminded of every single episode, every single Anything out of this network reminded to your phone, okay? You won't be slapped on anything, all right? First and foremost, thank you for all the love and support. If you listen to Trap Talk Reptile Network on all the audio platforms, Buzzsprout, Apple, Spotify, thank you so much. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Wherever you listen to Trap Talk Reptile Network, thank you so much. It means everything. Uh, don't forget, if you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get deeper into the Trap Talk Reptile Network, get more behind the scenes, meet 200-plus amazing trappers, then do me a favor, click the very first link in the description below and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. As soon as you join the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, taps you in with all 200-plus trappers, okay? There's also an amazing group chat going down on Instagram, which is just nonstop popping. Best way to network yourself with some of the best dude in the game, if you ask me. So thank you, all my Patreon members. I love you guys. What's good, man? Who's here tonight? Shout out to everyone in the early bird chats. If you're in the early bird chats, if you think tonight's episodes worthy of any uh super chats don't be shy drop a super chat uh if you have a question or topic for tonight's uh guest please don't be shy shout out to the homie simon in the building what's up simon pierre city limit exotics trap talk patreon member all day every day it's my dog what's good chondro manium the homie mikey in the building trap talk patreon member all day every day the homie shane in the building damn all these hitters right here what's good the homie uh shane uh, above all skills in the building what's up germany germany in the building Dalek in the building. What's up? Thanks for being here, player. I appreciate you so much. Lucid, Arboreal, Sweden in the building. Trap Talk Global tonight. We're already global. I love it. Uh, the homie right here, Lucid, Arboreal. Tap in with him on Instagram, please. Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Meteoric Serpents, JD, the young hitter. Friday. Thank God it's Colubrid Fridays. You're going to have the homie hosting another episode. Uh, he has a special host, co-host this Friday. So tap in, set your reminder, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And please subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, Meteoric Serpents and his podcast is called Colubrid Corruption. About to get corrupted, tell you that much. Big Mike, Uncle Mike Stefani. Okay, you want to talk about someone killing it on the Saturday morning segments? Monitor all monitor talk with Uncle Mike Stefani and Jen Black. Something you don't want to miss. Uncle Mike's finally letting it loose. Go see last episode if you want to know what I mean, man. Shout out to Uncle Mike. Appreciate you. Big things to come. And I uh, just mark my words on that. Uh, the Fishy Plumber in the building. What is up, the Fishy Plumber? Thank you so much. Heathen Hatchery in the building. What is up, player? Trap Talk Patreon member all day, every day. Susie from Shippy Reptiles in the building. What is good, Susie? Thanks for being here. Patrick Holmes. What a guy. We're going to end it with Patrick Holmes, the BIAC King in the building. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Patrick. Do you want to say, before we drop our co-host in here tonight, uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by the man of the yellow neonates. Mark Hager, Texas Condros. Big things coming from uh, Texas Condros. Two clutches hatched out, uh, going through feeding trials now with those two clutches. He's currently taking deposits on anyone who's interested. Uh, one of the clutches is a Calico Blue Line clutch, um, and one is a Sickness Sibling to a Melanistic Blue Line. Okay, so those are just two very potent clutches uh, that he's going to have availabilities on. So go check them out, texascondros.com, or just go to Texas Condros on ig send mark hager he's a very nice guy but just send him a message tell him you come from the trap that gives you immediately top of the list as far as what you're looking to get from my man mark hager okay texas condros this guy does not play he puts the entire state of texas on him. that's a fact thank you mark hager appreciate your love and support you can find this link in the description below and thank you so much man also tonight's episode is brought to you by blake exotic feeders implement quell into the game plan trust me i'm doing it all right i actually have my male condros um getting more quell i'm not joking um implementing more quell whenever i can just to kind of you know see how it works and i gotta tell you any reptile that eats my man blake exotic feeders quells is 
it's going the right way. I'm going the right direction. So go ahead over to Blake Exotic Feeders Instagram. Also send him a message. Let him know that Trap sent you. He'll take care of you on shipping, all sorts of extra stuff if you're a trapper. Thank you so much, Blake. I appreciate it. Um, last but not least, tonight's episode is brought to you by RGI, Rare Genetic Inc. If you, uh, you're inside the reptile game, and you're especially the ball python game, and you got some of the sheds that need to be proven, you got those 66%, those pos heads, well, go prove it out, man. Use RGI, uh, the leading cutting-edge uh, technology when it comes to sh uh, sh shed testing. And thank you so much, Ben and Sean, over at RGI. Um, cannot wait for the next episode with them, and it's going to be popping. Without further ado, here it is. Look at this guy. Who is this? Is this, is this the MJ of Texas? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that hat, bro? Oh my god, no. that, was, that was too much. What'd you think of that, Marshall? I thought that was fucking amazing, Marshall. You didn't get the you didn't get the memo. No, I didn't. Thanks hey, for thanks for including me. Hey, well, well, I got I got up to I got out of the shower. I got to, got in my closet. I went to get my Red Mountain Herp T shirt out of the closet. And lo and behold, I realized you couldn't find it. You couldn't I find couldn't it. Find, why do you think I couldn't find it? I don't know. Uh, because you've never sent me one. Oh <laughs> shit! Wow. Marshall, oh, wait, I, I've been oh, out. I've I got to make some more. Dude, I mean, okay, what can I say? Do me a favor. Sell that albino chondro and we're gonna steal t-shirts. Please, Jesus, man, please. My, I've been, I'm, I'm, been wanting to tweak my, my logo and my. Uh, my my designer's been kind of dragging their feet, so I gotta I gotta see what's up. Why mess with perfection, bro? <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, listen, we need an update, bro. People are on my bumper. What they want to know what's going on? Albino update and that clutch update, please. What's up? Uh, the four survivors are are all doing well. The albino has not shed yet, but it has uh, taken a, a voluntary meal, so that's huge. Saw that, and um, you know. Just waiting for him to shed. Uh, the other, the other three have eaten twice already. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've posted pictures of the three of them on Insta on my Instagram, and I'm just waiting for the albino to shed before I post another picture of him. But uh, uh, he's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a different animal after a couple of sheds, and I mean after a couple of meals in a in a shed. I think so. Now, now, is there any concerns with you know having a neonate not going into shed, but even though it's eating, like what, have you guys? Oh yeah, that? there's plenty of concerns, especially when it when it's the albino. But uh, uh, I mean, you can't do you know like what are you going to do about it? You know, so hopefully the he was a little bit on the small side, so it was not unexpected for him to be late on the shed. But um, yeah, hopefully this the meal that he took will kick him kick it in. Yeah. Bill, you've had a lot of neonates on your hands. You know, have you ever had one not shed for you and then kick into gear and all of a sudden just do great? Or what's the deal with your experience with that? Yeah, absolutely. And like Marshall said, uh, I've seen it, that happen more more likely with the smaller ones. Okay. So, yeah. And yeah. it's of course, of course it's the you know the rare ones, right? That fucking always have, you have to go through with this shit. Um, but wait, we're rooting for you, Marshall. Keep us posted, all right, buddy. Um, and Got my fingers crossed. Yeah, so meaning that that calico one you have is doing great, right? That's probably one of that's one of the four. Yeah. One, three. Okay, cool. Yeah, Woo! yeah, it's doing great, looking good. They all look good. It's amazing how much uh, how different they look after they eat two or three times yeah. from uh, from right when they hatch. You know, it seems like they really uh, you can tell um, when you've got them side by side with each other. I mean, it gets better after every shed, right? As you as a neo continues to continue to go on, like every shed is only a better moment, right? I mean, until they start turning green, I guess. But yeah, if you want to call it green, fuck, who knows what color that thing's gonna be? Yeah, bite your uh, tongue. Yeah, no shit. Uh, all right, Big Mac. We got Big Mac tonight. What's good? Who wants to say some words about Dennis McNamara? And I want you to maybe go first, Marshall, because you know, I mean, Dennis talks highly about. Yeah, you, you talk I, highly I, about Dennis. What's going on? I can't uh, remember exactly where we met. I know we've met multiple times, uh, shows and and whatnot. Um, but yeah, man, he's he's he just kills it. Uh, yeah, we mainly talk about ball pythons, but his I, I know he he's worked with all kinds of stuff, um, all all different kinds of python species and some colubrids and Amazons, and then he does this you know his, his stuff at the zoo, which uh, I think he takes care of pretty much you know a little bit of everything over there. So. Uh, and when he when we you know me and Matt Summers went to go visit him and he took us like on a little mini tour. Um, it got cut short unfortunately because he had some family emergency. But 
dude, it looked like well, the reptile side of things. This this man was running the show over there, um, and it was really cool to see like it it in action. Like you know, my my only experience with the humongous walk in bioactive enclosure with basins right there in front of you was at that Virginia Zoo, and I couldn't believe like how great it was. And Dennis told me like, yeah, we bred them back to back to back here, and I'm like, holy shit. So I'm very really curious to see how. Uh, what his take is, you know, on the whole bioactive and having them be co cohabitating in there. Cause I know there's one or two males to multiple females. So we'll get to, we'll get details on that as well. So, but yeah, it's been around, been around the block for a while. And Bill, you know, you know, Dennis is obviously right. I've known Dennis kind of like Marshall. It seems like a, a, a really a long time now. I, I can't pinpoint exactly where, where I met him either. Um, but like Marshall, you know, Dennis and I, traditionally have talked a lot of ball pythons in the past. In fact, um, I think my only ball python purchase in this whole last year was from Dennis, a, a, a sibling black, to your black head clown, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, I picked that up uh, the last Tinley that I was at, which would have been um, our, our last October Tinley. And um, so – that, which probably means that snake is like 2K less than what it was the year I was getting it. So, <laughs> Pro bastard. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, he gave me a good deal on it, and I'm sure he charged you full price. No, hell no. We, <laughs> we, we worked out actually a really good trade. De Dennis is awesome, bro. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I haven't known – I've known actually Dennis as long as I've been traveling and going to shows, and, I mean, I, I feel like I've known him for years. Like, he's just one of those guys that just – he's a fucking real likable guy and just real awesome. And he knows all the big hitters, and, you know, he's been around the block, man. So – and and with that and 20-plus years' experience at the zoo, it's just, you know, how can you not like this guy? So – I'd love to – got the experience that you got at the Virginia Zoo. That was – I'm sure that was fantastic. It was fun, man. It was fun. And I'm ready to talk to him about it. You guys ready to bring Dennis in the, in, into this or what? Let's do it. All Let's right, go. Guys. All right, game time. Let's go. It's uh, that time to do what you got to do to get your mind right. Do what you got to do to stay hydrated. Episode 478. Dennis, Big Mac, McNamara, come back to you right now. Let's go. Good. You ready for do, do more in the future? Trap yes. Talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only Trap Talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. <laughs> <laughs> From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, God love it, love it, and not I'm hot from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the everybody. Live episode 478. Big Mac in the building. What's up, Dennis? Dennis. How's it going there, fellas? Dennis, represent. What's up? Well, I heard What's that up? you guys could be a little rough to some of the guests, especially off camera. So I thought I'd butter <laughs> you up. <laughs> that's, at, that's at the end of the show, though. <laughs> not, not before it starts. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, I get everything in order just to make sure, you know, Anyone? I keep you all on my good side. <laughs> And he, and he wore the right <laughs> and he wore the right guy shirt first and foremost. So that's you're, you're, you're safe, buddy. Good job. But hey, good to have you back here, Dennis. And look at the circumstances. We got Bill and Marshall here for it. Um, I, know, I love you, it. How you been, buddy? Been very good. I'm busier than I'd like to be in some cases, but I think that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta say, man, you know, it's funny how you know Marshall, I love him for really because he's diverse in so many things and you know you're diverse as well but like what he could think of when he thinks of you is ball pythons and i think that's hilarious uh, 
because you you work with so I much. I said other people. stuff too. But that's the first thing you said was ball pythons. I'm like, come on, man, really? But anyways, I I know Dennis from his olive python um, success, uh, which I haven't, don't know when the last time you bred olive pythons. But my biggest thing that I've been so memorized by is when I went to go visit you at the zoo, obviously, you taking me on uh, the tour behind the scenes of the reptile exhibits and whatnot. Um, and, you know, mainly I just know that you've been experiencing some arboreal, uh, arboreal success with bioactive setups, um, and, and, and we could talk a lot about it, you know. Um, but first yeah. and foremost, what's going on with your own personal collection? Like, what's what are you excited about breeding right now? What do you have going on? Before we get into, like, the zoo talk and all that, what's going on with you? Um, I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure out. I'll, I'll have quite a few ball python collect clutches. Um, probably some Sumatran short tail clutches. I, I have one Maclots clutch already out. I've got another one laying any day. I've had some olive breeding, and I haven't had any eggs out of them in like two years for whatever reason. But they're also like 15 years old now. So, um, but so she's been breeding, and so I want to get a couple more meals into her and see what happens. I've had some Amazon tree boa breeding. Um, and then I've got like I've got colubrids too, so I haven't really started doing anything with them. But I'll have, hopefully, I'll have albino hundreds, various corn snakes, maybe some cow kings. Um, have you, uh, Dennis? Hey, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, hey, man. It's really it's really good to see you again and and talk to you. I've been looking forward to tonight, man. Well, good. I'm 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 glad to be here. I love this Tuesday night thing. I think it's fantastic. The three of you on here makes me want to hang gonna, out. You're not going to make it down to Dallas this weekend, I'm assuming, right? I'm not. I've never been down there, but I'd really like to go. Okay. Well, yeah. We'd, we'd Chad, Chad, said, Chad goes down there, and he said it's a fun show. I'd like to. I'd like to tag along one of these days. Well, I guess they got to figure out where they're going to have it permanently. Would be a next, yeah, good next step if it's going to be in Dallas from here on out, or they're going to find a, another venue. I know one place it's not going to be. It's not going to be in Arlington. Yeah. So, okay. That ship is sailed, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and that you know is a good spot. Hopefully the next spot will be good, um, but you know I I don't I, I do kind of want to just kind of talk about this real quick only because you being a Texan, Bill, for there being a show in Texas and having these kind of restrictions if, as far as no big python species, how do you think that affects Texan Texan keepers? Like, are, from what are you hearing from people in Texas about the restrictions? Like, are people pissed off or what's going on? Well, I I haven't heard a lot of good. I mean, I haven't you know had a lot of people come out and say, gosh, I'm so glad they moved it to, to Dallas where they can't have anything but ball pythons and crested geckos. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, I, I think that the venue would, would do itself a favor and try to get it, try to get it moved out of Dallas County. Um, I know that, you know, the size of it alone, it causes, you know, obviously a lot of logistics to find the right place for it. Um, but hopefully they can. Hopefully, you know, maybe Fort Worth. I know they've had uh, they've had relatively good sized reptile expos in Fort Worth before, um, which is only 20, 25 minutes away from the Arlington venue. So, right. Hopefully, they're looking into that. Um, and, and what is the rule? Is it no no pythons except ball pythons? Certain size it can't be over like a certain feet or something like that. I okay, yeah. I thought I, I want to say there's something about limiting even more than that, MJ. I, I want to say that they literally name like ball pythons. I'm know? pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's everything except ball pythons. I could be wrong about that, but that's that's what I thought I read. That's huh. kind of what uh, what I remember uh, hearing as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's going to be. I'm going to go Saturday, obviously, and kind of check it out. They certainly haven't had a problem selling. Selling all the floor space there. My understanding is 400 and 400 plus booths, 440 booths, bigger than the Arlington venue. Um, so I don't know. Be it'll just be interesting to see. And that's a whole hotel, you know, and the whole it's just gonna be different and not being, you know, in Arlington. It's gonna be one huge ball python swap meet. Fucking prices crashing left and right. Like fucking here, buy and take this whole table, please. <laughs> Um, no telling Dennis you have a lot of experience you know obviously dabbling at big shows Tinley is like a backyard show for you right how many yep. years in a row have you been vending Tinley now well so on my own probably four but I I started like Chad Hulker would get tables and I would go with him since probably 2012 or so 
And you go so, to you go but, to all of them, right? Both the, the I, fall and I the spring. Went, so until I got tables of my own, I didn't go to both of them. I would only go to the October one. Um, I hadn't gone to the March one until they were. But if you don't keep your table, if you don't use your table both times, then you don't get to keep it. And so now, it, like, I would say I also take it a little bit more seriously now than I did then. So I have a little bit more. I have a few more animals to bring. So it makes sense for me to go twice a year. And I really don't do a lot of shows. Like I do Daytona. I do both ten leads, and then I might do a Raleigh and I might do a local one. And that's probably about it. Um, plus, it's it's just it's nice. I mean, the drive sucks, but like <laughs> being out there is awesome. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I might, you know, I've, I've flown out there plenty of times, you know, and, and I like, you know, even getting out there with no animals is like, man, I'm tired. I can't wait to just hang out. But I couldn't imagine getting there and go, OK, time to go set up my booth. Yeah, Fuck that. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying no offense. To anyone does it. But, dude, that just sounds miserable. Like, but yeah. dude, you guys, you guys are all you guys, you guys have a niche for it because you guys are all really good at it. We leave on Thursday morning at like five something in the morning, get there at like six, seven at night, go to dinner, hang out, drink. Get up the next morning, and then at the show all day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then after the say, after the night Sunday, we start driving home. Get back Monday morning. That's got to oh. be the, that's got to be the hard oh. part, man. God, that's Sunday, Monday morning. That has, yeah. that has to be the worst for sure. Getting home. Yes, yeah, did you get? Rough. We've been talking about staying an extra day and just leaving Monday morning and coming back Monday night, but it's just like it's kind of like I don't know, and that's it's kind of weird when you're at those shows, like especially that show. Like, I wish it was, like, four days longer because it's, like, all this work to get there and all the travel. Like, it'd be, I'd be okay if I was vending for, like, five days, four days, you know, just to, to make it feel like it's worth it more <laughs> to travel that much. I think you're more, you're more likely to get at least one cell, too. <laughs> yeah, we did. This past show, like, this this uh, this March show was pretty good. The, I mean, it was packed in there. Sales were decent. I would say the, the average sale volume, like, uh, price was lower than normal right but the quantity of sales wasn't bad it just you just had to sell more you know but yeah. i'll say everything just kind of like just dropped down a little bit so what's what was the vibe this year at tinley like compared to like the last year at march and stuff like that like you know w would you say like the traffic was still about the same like as ever or, like was the energy a little flat or was it high what was it, what would you say the overall assessment was of last tinley i would say that the traffic was higher um it was busy um it was bit like it was busy i don't know pe people mainly like everybody was selling this stuff pretty well i think it just mm -hmm. again it was just like you know you were selling a lot like whereas you might have sold like 750 to 1500 dollars animals last year now you're selling like 300 dollars animals mm -hmm. you know or what you know so it's just the the values were lower and i feel like that was fairly common for most people you talk to um just to, i'd say the values are a little bit lower but the sales were there, like people were buying stuff. They just were buying it cheaper. Um, everybody had, I mean, we had a great time. I mean, I would say I, I love going. It's super fun. I mean, you know, the show itself is fun. You know, get to see it. It was so busy. You don't really get to talk to as many people as you'd like during the show. But um, as soon as we were done, we hung out every night and had a great time. So I would say the vibe was great. You know, we were, the, I mean, we hung out in the bar a lot. I, I mean, I, I got to dinner with Vin Russo every Friday when I'm there, which is always great. Um, then we went out with a different group on Saturday and then, you know, and Thursday night we do like Corey DeLong and Brock and Winston and I'll do all that. And like, so it's, it's a good, it's just a fan. I don't know. It's a fantastic time. Do you have yeah. a preference uh, fall or spring Tinley or just different? Whichever one I make more money at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Say is, you know, this one, the weather was decent. So as long as it, like for me, as long as it's not like crazy cold, then I'm okay. Yeah. Um, right. It wasn't bad. I mean, it snowed a little bit on the way home, like in Pennsylvania somewhere. But um, I don't know. I, I feel oh. like October is probably better in some ways because you're in the beginning of the season. You're just kind of like ready to go. You're still like in that things are hatching. Stuff. Whereas yeah. this is like the stuff that's kind of left over. But you also have more size on it and people have tax money and whatever else. So I feel like this show has more potential to get things that you may have slept on in the beginning, you know, and has a little more size to it. Yeah. I now, did you, have, did you have other stuff that involved pythons like you normally do at your table? So my my buddy Scott vended with me, and I, I personally had ball pythons and Hondurans on the table. Um, he came with me, and he brought some red ackies, and uh, he, I think he had some ball pythons too. He has a ton of other colubrids and stuff like that, but we really – 
there's a lot of laws out there, and so he has a lot of bull snakes and stuff like that. You can't have that out there unless you have. Oh, you can't have those. You can't have it at Tinley. Bull you can't have bull snakes unless you have a permit in Tinley. Really? Hmm. Yeah. No hog nose or bull snakes, and I think emery rats. I believe. I believe it's emery rats. Um, right. So you have to have a permit for, and there might be more species on that. But if I'm, I'm of the, especially with my job. I do whatever I can do to stay on the straight and narrow. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any wildlife violations. That, that's uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, could, I could lose a whole lot in a weekend that way. Yeah. Dude, that, that's, scary. Yeah, that's pretty scary to think, you know, because, you know, it is, awesome, yeah. it, it is an awesome position to be in that you have, but you're also no room for air type of position too. Like you can't fuck around at all. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. I mean, yeah, especially with my, yeah, my position and what I do and, you know, what I do inside of AZA as well. So like, it just, it, it definitely makes it so, yeah, I feel like, and I don't know that anybody cares. Like they probably, they may not, they might not even be paying attention, but to me, it's one of those things just over my head that I feel like I try to be on, the, I just try to be as a good boy totally as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. You got to with, with your, with your, with your day job. I mean, Rico was the same way when he was, uh, when we were doing shows and, and when we were doing, you know, I mean, he had like forms for everything. I mean, he was one of my best friends and we still had paperwork when we did, when we did right. a, a breeder loan, just because he had to have all the doc, you know, he wanted to have all the documentation should, should any, you know, anybody ever like, I, I don't, I don't even know what he was worried about, but, uh, <laughs> Well, it depends on where you are. He was, like, so he, was in, he was covered. If you're in Florida, you have to you have to worry about that FWC permit. So, if you don't have one and you have stuff on your table, if it's yours, if somebody you know, you can go to jail. I mean, you know, you can get a ticket. Right, can, right. We've seen people get arrested down there before. You know, the uh, wow. damn. You know, it's crazy to think of how how those things can go. But yeah, I mean, just trying to make sure you do all the things the right way. And in Tenley now, you have to get a a vet. Uh, Crap, cool. like, like yeah, you have to get like you have to be, and you yeah. get there and you pay the lady. They, like a lady comes over and looks at your stuff for fifty bucks, and they give you a certificate. Son of a bitch! Yeah, <laughs> yeah ladies, ladies making bank on there, but they come over. Which I don't think is such a bad thing. Like the a vet comes over and looks at every animal, like through the through the displays, but they look at everything and then they you give them fifty bucks, they sign it, say everything looks clean, and then goes. So, like in honesty, that's not a bad. Like I'd rather somebody do that. I don't know if, how quickly they check everybody, but. Unless, unless, it's, unless, they're like, is nice. unless they're like, here's 55 bucks. Don't say anything about that mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, well, that, I had, I have a friend that's the vet of the aquarium and she did the permit for us here one time. And we like, she looked at every animal, like palpated them all, looked in every water bowl, looked in the corners oh. of everything. We were in here for like two hours. And that's why I was like, I think she's fantastic and whatever else. But I was like, I'll pay the 50 bucks at the thing to get a quick overview rather than two hours of checking it all out right now. Sounds like kind of yeah. like a scam. Like, <laughs> like, have you ever seen it? Like them go, Oh, get that shit out of here. You know, it's right. not healthy. Yeah. Well, I have not, but they, I mean, I, I feel better. And, and the, it's called an import permit. That's what it is. It's a, a vet import permit, okay. but I mean, it does make sense, you know, for somebody to be there looking and making sure everything's all right. And to make sure the quality of the show is good. I feel like the way that my friend that's the vet explained it, she said, you need to have it before you go. But I'm like, she had come in here and we looked at everything. We looked at parents. We, and I was like, how do you know what I'm taking? I could take something else that wasn't even on the list. If you like, you could really be dishonest if you wanted to. That's why yeah. I, I kind of think that getting it done there for 50 bucks when somebody looks at you makes me feel like I'm more on the up and up because they're just looking at it out. I, right wonder if, so. uh, I wonder if, if, if that's somebody that like, let's say you saw something that you didn't think was right. You know, you saw somebody had some stuff at a table, let's say it's sick or had mites or something. Can you can you go to this vet and say, hey, listen, you know, somebody's got some some sick shit over here? Or I have no can... idea, but I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, the, it's a vet and like, well, I don't, I'm guessing it's like a vet and two techs walking around. So I'm, and they're the ones doing the whole thing. So I'm, I would imagine you could. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you get a business card from them or something. I, w I would. I'd be like, well, give me your card. Or, or, they just like give that. you an invoice. I have an invoice right here somewhere. They give you the permit with, like, their stuff is on top of it. So yeah, <laughs> if you wanted to get in touch with them, you could. It's probably in my box over there somewhere, but I, I mean, they give you their paperwork with, with whatever on it. All right. So check it out, man. This segment's all about things that are all in the trees, right? And you have right. notches in your belt working with multiple abortal species. One of the things that are already in the chat, people cannot stop bugging about it is your Amazon tree boas. Okay. Uh, shout out to my homie, Mikey, Trap Talk Patreon member. 
Um, apparently, you can't get a snake from Marshall, but go figure. I'm not surprised. Um, <laughs> Dennis, what type of Amazon tree boas are you breeding since I can't get Marshall to sell me one? In, in <laughs> Um, I have 3.3 .3 at this point in time. So I have a yellow male and a calico female together. And I've got a red male and a red female together. Um, and then I've got a little red male that I posted a picture of the other day that's grown up. Um, and then I've got a female I got from Ryan Young that's red, that's nice as could be, that's probably be ready next year. So hopefully nice. I'll just make a whole bunch of red animals. You know, I don't know. They're pretty awesome. What's your setup like for them? Um, my, if I didn't have this thing on a mountain, I was... Um, I have them in three by 18 by two cages, uh, or most of them are in that. And so I've got like two cross pieces of crepe myrtle. And then I've got some in a three by two by two um, animal plastics with like a shelf PVC and like corrugated tubes in there. Um, and then the baby's in a tub. Or he's not really a baby, but he's like a year like he's like in a tub. But everybody else is in cages. So I've got a stack. I've got a. I've got a stack. I've got two stacks of three foot cages that I have them all in. Marshall, remind me, you you, never, you hardly use the radiant heat panel with your Amazon tree boas or they're solely ambient. Can you remind me how, how you do it? Uh, I have it turned down real low. If uh, one of the females is uh, gravid or if, or yeah, if one of the females is, is pregnant or gravid and um, in the wintertime, if it gets like really cold, I just have it turned on like, you know, 80 or 82, yeah. something like that. Here's, a, here's the smallest one. Nice. If Very I can find cool. out what the camera is. So. so calico. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Um, now, you know, obviously you have quite a bit of a system running at the zoo. You know, when it comes to bioactive, are you implementing any kind of bioactive <laughs> stuff for your collection at home or no, I, I have, I mean, they're on cocoa with branches and stuff. Um, the one has PVC and other stuff, but the majority of them are just on cocoa and branches and then i miss them every day but other than that i don't i don't do anything because i mean the bioactive stuff you just have to have a lot more space which i could do i've thought about doing like bigger cages in here and less stuff but i like too much stuff that it makes it so i can't ever do that um because you got people who are really hard on about bioactive stuff and you know mind you you know some of the stuff is great like they and it's not right. impossible to pull off it's just a lot of work right but i'm sure people might be wondering how can this guy be at a zoo see all this bioactive stuff and he knows it works and he doesn't do this for himself at home. And your answer right there is because it does take a lot of space. And it's also a lot of unnecessary work. I feel like for species that don't really need bioactive is great, but do they need it, Dennis? Like, is it something? No, that's a necessity? we do it because it's easier. Cause we have, I don't know. We have 70 some exhibits at work and we have 98 species and like 450 animals or whatever it is. So, right. you know, there's a lot of things. So, the bioactive with bigger exhibits and we can also fit a lot more species in there if we try it like that but it just makes it in, all, in some ways it's a lot of work it's also a lot easier in some ways because you're not changing out bedding all the way all the time mm -hmm. so you can add fleas you can add ice pods you can add whatever else um we also we have a whole bunch of stuff in the backup area there that we don't keep bioactive so we might have a female on exhibit in a bioactive setup and then we might have a male in the back that's got access to branches and pvc and some mulch or and newspaper so or whatever else Right. Are the exhibit displays are those like true bioactive? Like you have you have insects in them, and you have yeah. you know like do, do you so if you see a, a turd, do you pick it up or you, or oh, you yeah, just yeah. let we it? Just, let... Yeah, no, we're we're cleaning. We change the water every day. We clean the water bowls. We pick up any poop. You know, you might not like take all the bedding out, but no, we're basically cleaning the cage. We're just not we're just not taking all the bedding out. I um, gotcha. So, but they but we have like a couple different species of isopods that are in there um, and just kind of let it, we just kind of make it. So, but, you know, like emeralds at work, like I've got an exhibit that's five by two and a half by four that has, well, sometimes it has a pair of basins in it and it has three annulated boas and 10 dart frogs, you know? So it's like, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with a lot of branches and cork tubes and stacks of slate with bedding and mulch and whatever else. Oh yeah. Marshall, yeah. Marshall can you see this Marshall? Can you see that at all? Yeah. yeah. Look, all he's, right. he's ready to go. All right, so this, That's is, this, this, exhibit. this is the one of the exhibits at the zoo. This is uh, one of the, the vlog I was able to record while I was oh, there man. hanging out with them. Um, I think this is the venomous. Yeah, here's a speckled rattlesnake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed it up, though, so I can get to the, the emerald tree boas because I want to see how these are set up here. Um, let's see where I they're I don't at. know. 
It's probably because we probably went in the backup areas. It's probably the last part of this. Let me see here. There's some old angle ones. Oh, here we go. Check this out. There you go. And you 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 uh, produced basins in that uh, right. uh, multiple times, right? Four years in a row. Wow. Oh wow. Same females? Like same? same female. or is it one one female? It's one pair. Four years in a row. Right, there it oh, is. Oh shit. That's the enclosure. It's fucking sick. What, back what, to back to back. Were those real? Were those real? Wow. Branches? Are they real? What? Were those real branches? Yeah. I have so many questions. How? How? Uh, how many? Like, how big is this female? Like, when? Like, what are you feeding uh, her every year? Five, to, five feet. To... She's not a huge female. She's probably five foot. Uh, I could. Probably, I mean, if I thought about that, I probably should have thought about whatever she weighs in grams. We weigh them, but I don't know that I paid. I don't really pay attention. We just put it and we log it for our vet stuff. Um, she could eat a small rat. Um, she's not huge. Yeah. And she enough. recovers. She recovers uh, well, obviously. Every yeah. every between does she go off feed when she's when she's pregnant? Nope. She'll go off feed at the very oh, end. Oh, she does. Really. Okay. Dude, that's so strange. There it goes. At least once an episode <laughs> that happens. Hey, it's been it's been a few since I've done it. So. Do they stay? Do they stay in there year-round, Dennis? Do you ever? Yep. Uh, they're just they're they're there. They don't ever come in at the back. I pulled there. the mail this year, so I did pull the mail this year because I figured for she had a real small litter this year with some slugs in it. So I I pulled the mail to give her a year a year off. Um, right. So she's she's in there, and I'm probably going to put one of her daughters in there soon. So we'll probably have two female basins in there, and then some, and we have a group of female annulateds in there as well. I um, think it's important. Go ahead, Dennis. I'm sorry. And I and I pulled the. We made a couple of litters of annulated in an exhibit like that a couple of years ago, and it just took us a little while to get rid of them. So I pulled I pulled the mail out of that just so we didn't have but so many because we we made a we made a lot. <laughs> so what what is uh what is feeding time like in that enclosure with all those animals in there? Um. So next to it, we have two vision cages uh, mounted on the wall, like two of the like 24 by 14 by. 20, I don't know, whatever they are. So what we'll do is we'll uh, let an annulated wrap one up, put one in there, let it feed in that cage. And then we'll, so we'll, we'll split up the annulateds that way. And usually the annulated's on the floor. So we'll just feed that. We'll feed two in those cages to the side, feed one on the floor. And then the emeralds are usually like on opposite sides or if they're, and then we'll just feed them. And then just somehow just kind of just check on them randomly. Baby we have setup. a lot of stuff together. Like we have, like, I mean, there's, Every snake exhibit, not everyone, but 80% of our snake exhibits have two snakes in them. So we just feed stuff together or whatever we need to do to make it all work. You know? And so I, what can you do as a zoo with the babies? Do, do you have to give them to other zoos or trade yeah, them or do you, you keep so, them all or what? Um, we keep, I keep whatever, like, luckily my job is I'm the curator of that building. So I get to kind of do whatever I want. Like really, it's kind of a so fantastic good. job as far as things go. So um, I get to decide what we're going to breed. I get to decide what we do with them. Um, I mean, there's a process as far as that kind of thing goes. So, like, there's other people that have to approve it and say whatever else or vet and, like, city manager in some way. Um, but, like, we sent a – like, if you go to uh, Reptilandia, they have a pair of basins that came from us that I sent them. Um, so, Ari got a pair of those from us. We've sent them – where else? We've sent them to other – just whoever needs some. So, basically, what there is, like, there's a, a zoo listserv for – there's a snake one, a lizard one, a crocodile one, a frog one, a turtle one. And so if we have something surplus, I'll just put it on there. And then if somebody wants it, they'll just say, can we have that? And then they'll do whatever pre-ships and we'll do whatever else. And if it's somebody that's not an AZA institution, we have to do like a, uh, we do a vendor profile. So basically it's kind of a pseudo background check. We want to know who you're, who you get things from, who you sell them to, or who you give them to, how you do your records, who your vet is, uh, stuff like that. And so we'll just kind of, Hey, look at that guy. Um, so we'll we'll just kind of go through and do that. But they go mainly to zoos. There are some people that we have. There are some people we have sent animals to if they fill out vendor profile and they're quality people. The problem with people, the people outside of the zoo is that you need people that will keep records and will tell you things. Right. And so the world isn't always great about that. Um, no, you know, so like I send still. Like we have animals that are on loan from other zoo, and every year I get a loan thing, I have to fill it out and send it back. You know, if I did that's that to Joe Schmo, they'd never get back to you. And that's why people 
that's part of why people don't get stuff from zoos. You know, they're also you got to cover your butt and make sure you're not doing something's going to come back and bite you because you're regulated to death. You know, you have people watching everything you do. So it's really just to make sure everything is on the straight and narrow and doing it right. Hey, Dennis, before we forget to talk about this, since we're on the topic of basins, um, one of the things in that blog that you broke down that I think is super important, because this is the first time I ever heard you feeding a, or someone feeding a basin like this and getting them to go. Because um, I know, I know, I know the meals are everything, man. Like, and that's that's one thing I heard from Gary Shavino, and then something about Keith McPeak, like feeding them at the right time and like getting them to right. go. And you do the exact same thing, but you feed them multiple mice. You don't feed yeah. them rats. Yeah, so we'll do like regular rats on in general, and then you know you can tell when you see that female move from like the cool side over to the hot side, or you see her move, you see her do something a little bit different. She's laying a little bit funny. Um, then I'll just go over there and I'll just saw out a pile of mice and go over there and just feed her as many as she'll eat. And so <laughs> I find that like if I do that and I give her like six or seven, like if she's doing that, if I do that once or twice, she's gonna ovulate and she's gonna go. Six or seven, so, dude. That, that's like this is a psychotic eater. Like, how do you sit there six, seven times of a fuck, dude? They're 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 nuts, bro. I don't know how you do that. Well, like once they start eating like that, they're they just kind of grab. It. They're not wrapping it up anymore. They just kind of grab it and just kind of wow. Just, they're just swallowing it. So, you know, and like I would say, that's the big one of my biggest thing that I try to preach to my people and myself is just be patient. You know, so if you can just be patient and you can wait it out and see, and what you know, we're watering them every day and spraying them. And if they drink for 20 minutes, we spray them for 20 minutes because mm. you're going to get them to poop that way. Or you're going to get them to whatever else. But I really feel like, and you know, you had the Ron, you had Ron on here and, and Ron and I've spoken quite a few times about this uh, is I'm a big, I, I just make it so they just drink as much as they'll drink. Cause you know, you can put the water bowl in there they'll drink a little bit, but it's amazing how much they'll drink. If you just spray them in the face, you know, lightly, yeah. not, not blasting them, but you know, if you're spraying them and they're drinking, then we we just don't stop until they stop. And literally, sometimes it can be like 20 minutes of just spraying them and them drinking. Right, right. And we do it every day. Wow. Yeah. So it also makes it so, like, I'm not a micromanaging kind of guy, but it also makes it so I know that people are looking at every animal. Right. So and we, those, 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 those misters go off multiple times a day, right? How many times are the, 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 does the... Uh, the misters are the people's hand. It, we don't have any misters. Oh. It's all, okay. it's all and, pump okay, sprayers. Yeah. We have Wait, some so you have someone, you have someone sitting there for 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. Oh, nice. I thought I thought I was the only one who did that, like an idiot. <laughs> no. Fuck. No, I, I, I do this sometimes, too. I'll just sit there. And I'll see them drinking, and I'm like, I can't stop until they stop drinking. And they won't stop sometimes. I'll be like, holy so, shit, look how thirsty this thing is. So so it's so it started for me. We bred a lot of Mellor's chameleons. We bred like 150 Mellor's chameleons 10, 5 years ago, 6 years ago. And so we would find that when we sprayed them, they would all drink and they would all live and they would all survive. If we put a misting system on there, or if we sent them to somebody that did a misting system, they no never fail. They'd call us be like our animal died because they weren't going to this. They, it might've been misting in there, but they weren't going to it to drink. Like right. the water, they're not, they, some things aren't smart enough to go get it. It's just not built into them. They have to go get it. So, wow. so we, I kind of took that and was like, so for those chameleons, we were doing that three times a day. We we're doing three mistings a day on babies. Wow. And so I just found that like that was a good way to learn something because you sit there in front of them and you know if they're off, you know if they're doing something different. So it's just, you know, we have, what do I have? It's me and four employees, four, four keepers. And so, you know, from 7.30 in the morning till say 10.30, they're changing water and spraying stuff every day. This is nuts because uh, I don't know if you caught last week's episode. Um, my man Chris Chris Rice, you know, oh, you know was, no, because I, I, I saw the anti spraying thing. I wanted to. I did not. <laughs> I've not watched it yet. Now, here's the thing. That was kind of like a far fetched thing. Like he's not like right. he's not saying don't spray your animals, um, right. but he's just saying it's not something you need to do to have the humidity and you know to to ensure that your your snake is drinking. You don't need to spray them. Um, you, you know, and you know, obviously, I just kind of I laid it on a little thick there, but I'm just saying. Um, his thing, his theory, and he brought up a clip from somebody else who's in the chameleon. He's in the chameleon game. And the, I guess the doctor who was talking or the veterinarian, whoever the guy was, I forget, was saying that the way they drink is with the mist that's in the air, flowing in the right. air. They're, um, they're inhaling it. But 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 based on what you just said, that's not the case because they're they're dying. Well, well, I mean, it's in a captive environment. So have you ever – it might have been on your show. I mean, when, when 
and some of these things are like when Ron had that thing years ago that you talked about finding chameleons in Florida at three o'clock in the morning, you didn't find any. And then at four o'clock the morning, dew came out and everything, everything emerged from the ground to drink. Yeah. And they were all drinking. So I don't know how long ago I heard that, but I heard, but it was kind of one of those things that I was like, that makes sense to me. And we had already been doing it. So I just kind of expanded upon it. It's not to say that that's what, I mean, not everybody has to do it. It's, it's what works for me, what works for us. So I'm a, I'm definitely a keep it simple, stupid kind of guy. And if it works, then there's no reason to change it. Yeah. He was basically saying that they get a hundred percent of their uh, uh, moisture from the air. Like that, that they don't, that they don't drink in the wild. I think that's what he said. Well, it's probably 90 some percent humidity. It's just not, I mean, you know, even right. if you tried, you can't make that in your house. Like, yeah. There so. we go. This Shout to Chris, but he, he said the chameleons are getting their hydration hundred percent from fog in the wild. The captive keepers on the cutting edge are switching to doing solely fogging for hydration in captivity. Now we do fogging for eyelash wipers. And we have it like it's really foggy in there, and if you spray them, they drink for minutes at a time, and it's it fogs all day long. Yeah, I do the same thing for parv for Ethiopian mountain adders and rhino vipers. We have fog going in there all day long, and if you spray them, they'll drink. Yeah. So I mean, is it right? Is it wrong? I don't, it, it just it's it's what works. I I'm a firm believer in making sure that it seems like hydration makes a big deal and makes a and I've been doing this for a long time, and so it works for me. I'm not I'm not one to change a whole lot. <laughs> like I, I like to keep things simple. I like to if something's not working, I step back and try to pay attention and see if I see something that's different. And I do keep things differently at home. I try to keep things simply that I know. Like my wife always says that I change in my enclosures more than I change anything else. Like I do definitely like I might have an ARS rack or I might have animal plastics cages or vision cages or. I definitely switch things around to try things if I feel like something's different, especially after having kids. Like I was like, how can I make this easier? Because your time is definitely limited. And so, you know, I've kind of gone to a what's what's easiest and what works for me at home just to, to make sure that I do it all right, too. But yeah, it's, you know, hard, it's hard. It's hard to. To say that the misting isn't important when they all seem to drink so well from it. Yeah. And me. you know, mind you, I've seen them just go straight to the water bowl and have a good chug too. I see, you know, well, from yeah, my experience, we'll see them still drink. drink. Yeah, like I'll I'll come in in the morning and they'll be down there drinking out of the bowl, but it doesn't mean like I'm telling you, we could spray them an hour later and they'll drink for 15 minutes. So it's weird. But yeah, that, it is what it is. Marshall, I can't I can't remember. You don't spray your emeralds at all, do you? Not unless they need to poop. Hmm. No, I mean like, but if I if I had a cage big enough where I could spray them for 20 minutes and it wouldn't like waterlog the cage, uh, I, I, I think I would, you know, I think I would uh, consider doing that. Well, I mean, if I had, if I had the time or if I had, yeah. you know, somebody, somebody to do it for me. <laughs> how, 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 how often are these basins shitting from what you see? Um, well, well, they shit as you spray them. You're probably every two or three meals. So maybe monthly. Every three weeks, four weeks. But does but the spray and does... as you spray it, they'll start to drop their tail. Yeah, and yeah. As yeah. You spray and more, you'll see them start to do it. But we really have no issues as far as they're always going. That's how they. And like I use all, like eyelash wipers the same way. Like they don't poop unless you sit there and spray them, or it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. I mean, and also, Bill, clearly spraying chondros gets them to shit all the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's. <laughs> Kind of a go-to, you know, spray them if that doesn't work, handle them if that doesn't work, soak them, you know. Between those three tricks, you, you know, you can always get a condor to take a shit. But are you ever struggling with condors having to shit, Bill, or do they just always shit eventually? Like, what's what's your take with, like, you know, adult condors shitting on the regular? No, I've got, I mean, I've got a few that are notorious. They're females, adult females. You know, they will hold. Now, will they eventually take a shit? You know, I mean, I don't know. I've... Usually I have my tolerance and, you know, this one just hasn't shit and it looks, it looks, you know, either it's grab it or it's backed up and I don't want to feed it again until I can get it to take a shit. And so then I intervene and, and one of those three things usually gets it to take a shit and then I'm happy and it's happy and, you know, we get back to business. Dude, Patrick yeah. Holmes, 
Go ahead. We Sorry. had a really old, like a 24-year-old Emerald. She just passed away this past year. But she would have some issues as she got older where she wouldn't go. But never fail. We would take her outside, put her in the grass. She'd cruise for a minute on the grass, and she'd almost always poop. It's like as soon as she hit the air in the grass, it, like, it made her just poop. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Um, I was thinking of something else. My, my mind just went blank. Um, okay, I, now chondros. Um, you, you do have chondros, I remember, in the back of the room at that zoo, but not I've on, I've not, not on not exhibit, made, too. Oh, you have an exhibit. Okay. Yeah. And and what what's the group being kept within the exhibit with chondros? It's a pair. Just a pair. It's a pair of arus that are on exhibit that are probably 10 years old. Something like and that. How, how many clutches are you getting from them? Now, and honestly, I've not so that male has bruised a clutch with a different female, but I've never gotten a clutch. They breed a lot, but I've never gotten a clutch out of the pair that's on exhibit. Huh. But he has produced, he has sired a clutch with a female that she didn't sire her first clutch till she was like 16. And then she got wonky after she sired after she laid that clutch. And she lived to be about 22. Wow. And then she, well, she just died like a year ago. And we have her sister who's like 24 back there. So we have a we have a 24-year-old female that's back there that came from Sedgwick County originally. And then we have a pair of uh Aru's on exhibit. Yeah, that that's old school. I wonder, is that the Sedgwick County that's that's gotta be the same zoo, right? But is it the same uh I wonder if it's the same animals that's on all of the old chondro right. pedigrees and this that snake is badass now unfortunately somebody tried to pop her or something and she's got some funky kinks like down towards her tail um it was long before me that uh i don't know but she's like 80 percent yellow has a has a big biak head but has like the yellow of like a lemon tree like it is a, it's a nice looking animal wow it's just it's just a shame. She just has some kinks in her spine, so I don't ever have her on exhibit. So she just lives in the back. So she just lives back there and hangs out. And somebody produced that animal, Dennis, or it's in the Central County did. So we got it directly from them. So it was that one, and then the other one, which was her, which I thought was her sister, but the other one was green. Um, I'm pretty sure they both came from. I'm pretty sure they both came the same place. I could look it up and tell you, but they. I'm pretty sure they were both Central County animals. Mm. Now, what's going on as far as like you're like, are you trying to push to get success with, with Condros, or is this kind of like, oh, if it happens, it happens? Like, are you yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really put much effort into it. I, they were breeding like two weeks ago, and I kind of thought about it. I probably should go there and pay, pay more attention. I don't do that section very often. Um, like, I don't know. The section that I do is mainly like tree monitors and croc monitors and stuff like that. That's the stuff I do in the morning. Right. Um, it's just what I like to do there, and I do crocodile and whatever else on that side. And, um, so I haven't really, I haven't really like put much effort down there. So it's uh, is that this is that the one, one twenty plus years old from what it says? Yeah. There it is. Can you see that, Marshall? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the one you're talking about with the weird kinks because because it says yeah, it's a, she has kinks in her. She I looks mean, more green there than she does. I feel like in person. That's the one that laid babies and then never like she lay she like never sat right after that for whatever reason. Like she. Huh. It was like, but she was older and, when she had it. But those, yeah, those are like off exhibit setups we have. We just have and those are you setup. said those are twenty something year old females. Uh, twenty, I think the one's twenty four now. It's crazy. Never heard of a female living that long. Yeah, well, well bred that, her, so that, that have been that, bred. That have been bred. Yeah, that uh, female's never been bred. So oh, that makes no, sense. no condros at home, Dennis. No condros at your I, place. I have had condros, and I don't have any now. But I would tell you. I am, I am close. As soon as I figure, I need a couple more Amazons. I feel like, but I, I feel like Beox are in my, uh, in my future. Hell yeah! Got the yeah, MJ has a lot of nice ones. Patrick has a lot of nice ones. I actually spoke to Patrick about some today, about some Beox today. I, I don't, I don't know when that's going to happen, but it, it's eventually. I think I'm going to do some. I have, I've had a lot of chondros over the years. Um, I had some sarongs that I bred and. I've been very. I've I've done a horrible job of chondros. I've hatched three, but I've, they did not survive. I've had quite a few eggs, but I've had eggs laid from perches. I've had leg like I've had just the worst luck that I feel like I just need to pay attention more. Um, That's why there's not fifty thousand of them available on Morph Market, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I've raised up quite a few. Like I I did the whole thing where I would raise up a whole bunch of them, get it to breed size, and then be like, 
the first time I ever bought albino blood pythons, I had a whole conjure collection that I sold so I could buy blood pythons. You know, it's like so I've it wasn't a huge collection, but it was a couple of Bioc females. I had some Bioc Aru crosses that were man, that was like the best cross. I know Ryan is probably crying right now if I say that, but uh, like those Bioc Aru animals were big yet white splotches, yellow green. They were really pretty. Um, had sarongs, I had some Jayapuras, I've had some Arus. I've had a little bit of a smattering. Then I got some, uh, I had a Macline animal that I bought from this guy that came from Rico. And I, and I had a tiger stripe animal that I probably had for a month and a half. And it, I, it was this awesome little male that was a red baby that was, I had gotten it just to pair to that Mac line female. It came from Rico too. And I just came in one day and that snake was perfect. Like it's one of those, like those kicking the balls chondro stories where that snake was perfect. And I came in one day and he was on the floor and I was like, just take the wind right out of your sails, you know, just so. In there. Done it. Yeah, so I, I think I think some of those things are the reason I haven't followed through all the way. But I definitely have, and it seems like was, the more I money was, I spend I was, on I was, one I was them. There, I was there less twelve less than twelve hours ago, buddy. All right, let me know if you want to know the feeling. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did get dark pretty quick. I'm sorry, yeah, but I'm not. But listen, it is what it is. You've got to keep it moving, man. Yeah, they're just I don't know. They're and I've read a lot of carpet pythons. I've read scrub pythons. I've read all these different things like. I should be able to do those well, and I have not. But I don't know that I put that much. I really don't know that I've paid that much attention. You know, when I had, you know, now that I have kids and I'm home more, I'm not going out all the time and whatever else. I, I feel like now is probably the time that I would pay attention to them better and have better success at home. I mean, you got to pay attention for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, you know, in my, before kids, it was like, we went out four nights a week. We went out, you know, it was a, you know. Wild time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> having a great time all the time. No, not that I'm <laughs> like I love being with my children. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not going out now. You know, hardly ever. So I'm here. Yeah. I have a were TV gonna, in here. I'm, you know, I'm good. Were you going to a bunch of fish concerts, or what were you doing? <laughs> no, no fish. No. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know that I could ever go to fish concerts. I'm not sure. But. <laughs> um, I, okay. I, this Sunday, Crowbar plays. I would like to go see that. That's probably that's more up my alley. What's going on, though, as far as your take with locality and designer stuff? If someone were to sit down and ask you what your take is as far as preference, do you have a preference or do you like them all? I do like them all, but I think that if I were to do them at this point in time, I would probably go locality. Um, just because – and and, and you and wouldn't cross them? The What's that? And you wouldn't cross them? I don't know that I would at this point in time because I, I start to think about – so, and this is not the case because you two – well, I guess, MJ, you're probably not far off if you get all this stuff going well. But, uh, you know, I feel like in my life, you look at things and like albino boas are hot. But you know what the most valuable thing right now is the Peruvian. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I feel like as time goes on, the most valuable thing eventually will be. Cheapest. Will be a. a it's what's cheapest we'll right be, now. Yeah. yeah. It flips. And so it flips. I feel like, you know, those are the things that as I've done this over the years, I find, you know, you chase all these projects and you chase all these things. Then you hear all these stories about like, they don't even, they don't know how to wrap the eggs and they don't know how to do whatever else. Like, and I don't know if that, that really deters me, but I kind of think the way that they come out, if, if that's what you can get and that's where the, I feel like eventually long-term, that's where the value will stay. Um, but again, like those sickness things, I don't know if those are ever going to be cheap or like that stuff you have Marshall. I don't even, you know, all that, like, you're never going to have a cheap snake out of any of those. So I, I think in, in in general, I think if you just make a chondro, you're good to go. Well, you need so here's the thing with Marshall. Yeah. You, need, you need someone yeah. to price something to value it. He ain't pricing <laughs> nothing. He's not showing nobody nothing. You don't know. Like only he knows. It's, they're they're literally invaluable. <laughs> right. He's, I mean, he's just he, he's elusive. I mean, Marshall's the kind of guy that comes to Virginia Beach, like 15 minutes away from me, and I don't even get to see him. <sighs> I mean, you know, I hated it. I hated that. But yeah, they. Uh, um, so it's just elusive. <laughs> elusive describes Marshall perfectly. <laughs> he's like that at Tilly. Uh, he's elusive. He like you he's see not him elusive at Tilly. You bring him a mill. You have a backpack full of Miller Lights, and you'll see That's him right. as often as you want. <laughs> <laughs> that last time he was at Tilly, had a backpack of Miller Lights. I saw Marshall about every twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
So I'm curious. So Dennis, like, you know, if you have the space, you have the time, the availability to add chondros, how would you do it? Little by little, one by one. Would you get a group if you could? Um, like, would you would, would you be like your buddy Ron and get fucking thirty something plus and throw them outside <laughs> and see what happens? No, no. I, I, that Ron, I, I, no, that's that would overwhelm me. No, I don't know that I would ever do it that way. I would like, in honestly, in my head, I'm thinking I'd probably get a pair of Beox and maybe a pair of Aroos. Um, it's probably in my head. That's what I feel like I would try to. So get. you could cross them. Yes, <laughs> maybe. You never know. Give me the options. It's not what I would probably do, but it's you know then I have options. <laughs> Ryan Young's like, it's not funny, Bill. Stop it. <laughs> well, only hey. if you, oh yeah, only if you got the red, the red Biox. You'd have to get red Biox. Yeah. No yellow. Yeah. yeah. Damn, dude. Benny oh Bender. boy. Benny Maybe I get one of each, and that way I can please everybody. There Benny you better call oh. Yellow Neos Tex Mex. <laughs> oh man, that's a low blow. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know, but Kenny has some <laughs> awesome snakes too. I wouldn't mind like I talked to Kenny about some of those things and like Vince, Vince is Kenny his uh the yeah, the, uh, yeah Kenny yeah I love Kenny that that hey what a kid man I can, yeah I can, so I can do something else he he's making some really cool stuff so I told him I was like I wouldn't mind having some of that too so you know and that's the problem that then that's my problem is you know I say I'm gonna get a pair of condor the next thing you know I'm gonna come in here it's gonna be every locality that I could ever get a hold of that's that's my issue you know. I think that's all of our issues, but that's my issue. You know, that's that's why. <laughs> well, they are they are cheaper than kids, Dennis. So maybe you lay off having the kids, get a couple more hey, condros. I I have two, and I'm good to go. Okay, I, I'm I'm <laughs> over the I'm over the breeding age at this point in time. I think so. Let's hope. Now, I mean, I got to ask you though. At some point, when it comes to you pairing up condros in a private collection, in your own collection, are you? kind of nervous at all like where do you think you at you're at as far as taking on a chondro pairing and, and going the whole distance and establishing like what do you think you how do you think you would take that on i don't think any. i mean i wouldn't say any reptile makes me nervous as far as stuff like that goes so i mean i i think i'd set them up and i would do actually I'd probably do them right like i have my well the perch would be smaller but i'd probably do them just like i have these amazons if i were to do it and set them up like that and just kind of do the same basic thing so you know, I try to do, I do mainly ambient in here until something's gravid. Um, I'd probably do something like that and keep it like, like right now, what are we? Well, it's like 83 in here right now. So, I mean, I, I'd probably have, if I had them lower, maybe they'd be a little bit, but that's, that's high. That's like six feet off the ground. But I mean, if you um, do 83, you wouldn't, you know, you definitely need no fucking, uh, any other heating supplement other than that i'll tell you that much. yeah and my room fluctuates a lot too so like i've done like i do most of this stuff ambient i mean i have heat tape on there but it's set basically at the ambient but you know that's how i've done most of the things is you know in the summer my room can get up to 87 and the winter it might get down to like 79 80 i just let the room just kind of dictate how things are going and then just as long as i'm paying attention to them and then is it a I'll basement or, or, or what it wh what's that is it a basement no, it's just uh, we don't have basins here. There's a water table. So it's a, oh, it's yeah, okay. I, I have a 26 by 13 room on the back of the house. Uh, mm. It's got a concrete floor. I've got a few windows in here, and I'm just like on the, the back the back edge of the house. Uh, so, yeah, I just kind of go by that and just pay attention and see what they're doing, and I would probably move them around me if I need to. Like, like the Amazons, I have a stack of cages, so, like, I keep the girls up higher, the boys lower. Um, just so the boys are a little bit cooler, and yeah. if I need to turn on heat, I can turn on heat. If I don't, then I don't. I don't keep I don't keep heat on Amazon's hardly at all. Actually, I don't have I don't. They don't even have access to heat. So, what's, what's the coldest your room gets, Dennis? Um, the heaters like I have it set at like it'll get down to say seventy three. Okay, something like that. I used to let it get down like sixty eight, sixty seven. Um, but I don't know that I've needed to do that. It, it seems like that was when I had a lot of carpet pythons and Wilmas and stuff like that. I was letting it get a lot cooler. I don't know that I needed to. I just did. Um, whereas now I keep it more. I have a lot more ball pythons now than I ever have. So I think that's kind of it's kind of made it. So things have, you know, adjusted because of that. Um, that's, not, that's not what people are doing right now. Just so you know. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> They're getting rid of the ball pythons and adding different shit right now. That's kind of what's happening. I've got like 15 species of snakes, so I don't need to adjust it. I mean, I, you know, I, I have plenty of plenty of variety. I probably have too much variety, in all honesty. But uh, 
you know, I'm the kind of guy, like if I find something that I like, then I just get it, you know, and if I have yeah. to move something out to make the room for it, then I'll do that. I mean, this is, uh, the whole point is fun, you know, and I would yeah. say before we had children, I didn't care if I made a dollar, you know, I would go, I'd go to a show and if I made three grand, my goal was to spend three grand before I got home. You know, that was, you know, that was kind of how, that was kind of what I did, you know, and, and then we had kids and I was like, oh, I have the biggest room in the, I have the biggest bedroom in the house. I've got to start making some money. So I started, you know, adjusting how I did things, but, you know, really it was for, I don't know, shoot, how old is my daughter? My daughter's seven. So up until seven years ago, if I made money, I just got rid of it. You know, I mean, not, not and that's odd to say, but it was yeah. just kind of like, it was fun. You know, the whole point was to do whatever I could do to make it as fun as possible. And if you were out with me, you didn't have any money, then I would just buy all your stuff, you know, or whatever. Just, you know, what good is having money if nobody's there to enjoy it with you? That's that's facts. And, you know, it's crazy how that does change. The dynamic changes when you have kids, right? You know, as far as, huh. like, what you do with that money, and it's uh, it's not really yeah, fun anymore. <laughs> Well, yeah, and and you know, I have a wife and I have a whatever else, and like that that all changes, that all changes those things. You know, your priorities change, and but we have a pretty good life. You know, we do we get to do a lot of good things. We have an awesome house with a cool backyard, with a pool, with a bar, with a patio. You know, you know, we 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 live less than a mile from the beach. You know, it's, it's, life is pretty good with how things are, so I can't complain too much. And your wife is a zookeeper, also, right? Or, or works at the zoo? Okay, yeah, she was. I I recruited her years ago from from Disney. Um, she worked at Disney and then came up here. So we've been together ten years. Ten years. Um, but she two years ago decided that she would. The problem with being working in the zoo field is the schedule. Um, and so we had two kids, and we realized that our kids were going to daycare. We we're dropping off at seven and we we're picking them up at six. Yeah. And, and so after we had two, we were like, that just can't happen anymore. And yeah. so she does, a, she has a skincare business selling Rodan and Fields, uh, like basically skincare and they do hair care stuff, whatever else. And so she got to the point where she was basically making her salary doing that. And so we just decided we switched everything over where I paid the bills and I paid uh, insurance and I paid whatever else. And, we tried it for a little bit and then decided we just would do that. And so, which having two kids and one in school, like she's busy all day, whether she's at work. Oh, or yeah. Not, so, Hell yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it kind of, it's worked out. So she says she doesn't miss being in the zoo world now. It's, she's, she's happy with how things are. So she's pretty awesome. So whatever, whatever makes her happy is good with me. As long as we can do it, then I'm happy with that. Yeah. I mean, that, I got to say, that's one of my biggest goals in life now is like being able to have my wife not work anymore. Um, that's so hard because she makes so much fucking money. So like I'm just <laughs> right, like I would need to like somehow like recruit her and somehow make it worth it. But right now I I can't, you know. But but I I also think, man, what a perfect world it would be to have her just be with Leo right now. And and you know, but right, right. now I'm I'm the stay at home dad right now, and it's it's cool. I like it. It's not bad. When well, they're only a little once, so you know you got to get as much time as you can with them. So yeah, it's true. Um, hey, right Dennis, now, does, you, does your wife help you with the animals? Does she help you with your she, we, have some, that we have red foot tortoises and she messes with them, but that's a, she's she is not a snake person for being for being a she was an elephant keeper is what mainly what she did elephants and giraffe. Uh, Sick. She is she likes them. She'll come back and look and stuff like that, and she'll tell me that the room smells if somebody did whatever else. But uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> she was with elephants, really? Yeah, she was an elephant. Yeah, that's that's what I did. That's what I did at that point in time too. So we both were elephant keepers when when so. I recruiter and then i i switched over to taking i switched over to doing reptiles at the zoo in 2012. um and so she like she moved our tortoises outside today so we have a group of red foot tortoises so we have so she kind of she likes those and messes with those we have some eggs and we hatch them out usually i just give those away so like we have friends that want them i just give them away if we have babies uh but they're neat turtle I and mean, they're neat that's what she likes so i bought a group of turtles I definitely, I, I definitely want to go back to your zoo, man. Um, because yeah. I definitely, I, I there was the rhin rhinoceroses I didn't get to see, which I wanted to see really bad. Right, and we're building the Parenti exhibit right now. I'm getting, I'm getting like, We just finished, we just finished the green anaconda exhibit, so we have one coming in next week. There's always something new. That's the good part about it is I get to like, I really get to pick out whatever. So it's like there's always something happening. So it's kind of I don't know, that part's fun. That's cool. Now I, I hate to talk about this, um, because it's like a sad thing, but you know. And I, and this is really Bill's fault because I think the uh -oh. first time I first time I went to go hang out with Bill, I was like so just like in a whole other world, right? 
And I don't know what it was that made him think about, I think we're talking about traveling and he told me, he's like, yeah, I would say like in 10 years, I, I would want to like not do this. And I'm like, what? And like, you know, I'm thinking how quick things are going by. And I'm like, fuck, like, I can't imagine Bill not doing this. Like, I just, you know, I just, I'm just here, you know, and five, it's five years now. It's five yeah. years. It's five years now. Yeah. Um, but Dennis, is there a point in time where you ever feel like, like, man, I don't want to have all these animals like I've been having or, or, you know, is that even something you and your wife even talked about at some point or what? I'm just curious. She might talk about it. I don't know. I, I have no, you no, know, I, I'm still as, I don't know. I, I love it. So I, I don't know. I'm still obsessed with, I still find stuff I like and have to talk myself out of it or talk myself into it every, every day. Now I am at the point where I am like, how I'm seven, six or seven years away from where I could retire from the zoo. Um, and so I'm at a point in life where I'm like, it's hard to think about, but like, that part's hard because I'm like, I don't know that I would ever want to retire from it, but I might, especially having kids. Like, I've been thinking, like, if I can retire from that and get my, like, if I retire, I get 51% of my pay from when I retire if I'm over 50, um, which I will be. And so if I could do that, could I just do snakes and stay home? Um, so that's where I'm at in my head, really, is could I get to the point? But the only problem with that is I feel like insurance. This in, insurance is the thing that I worry about having two younger kids. Um, but I don't know that like to me, I'm like, I'm thinking about adding more to make it so I could do that. Not so much getting out. I don't, I don't, I don't foresee myself ever getting out. I don't know. Dennis, that, that's, that's, where, right. that's where I was, Dennis, that's where I was, you know, a decade ago. Yeah. I was, what do I have to do to add more to build up so I could, you know, so I can leave my practice and, and do it full time. So I, I'm just a decade ahead of you, man. That, that, that's all, you know, but I'm just telling you that. that. And I've just, you know, I've discussed this with MJ and, and Marshall and a lot of other people, you know, it's okay to go through seasons in your life, you know, and, right. it's, and, you know, it, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm any less passionate about the animals. I think I'll always, you know, have my hand in the game, so to speak, but, you know, it doesn't have to be what it is today or what it was 10 years ago. Yeah. Right. Are you happy with having made that transition? Like, is that, has that been a good oh my, thing for you? Oh my God. It was, it was incredible. It is incredible. I mean, yeah, so I feel like the same way. I mean, that's a, I mean, Chad, I bring up Chad cause he and I talk every day, but like he lives right down the road, but that's where he's like, if I, if he could retire for being a fireman, could he do that and just do snakes? And so, you know, we have a little bit different philosophy on how we would do whatever else, but like, I don't know. It seems like it could be a good gig. And then I could be home. Like, you know, I work Tuesday through Saturday. So I'm, I'm at work every Saturday, but I mean, my schedule, I work seven 30 to four 30. Uh, mm. I have every Sunday and Monday off. I get, I mean, I have a lot of leave. I have 51 weeks of leave on the books that I can get paid for if I want to take off. Wow. Um, I mean, working for the city has a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, could I be, what I think I'd be 54 or something like that. And if I could retire at that point in time, I, yeah. Could I be 54 and I have to go to work and just stay home and read some snakes and go to a couple shows? Like, that seems fantastic. Yeah, it'd be you know, pretty I, nice. Yeah, it is. You I know, mean, I, I hope it wouldn't burn me out or whatever else, but I mean, that's what I do all day anyway. Yeah. So maybe I would adjust. I don't know. I, it's, I would say it's my, it's probably my goal at this point in time is what I'd like to do. So, so I definitely am not getting out. I don't, and I don't know. Like, the only thing I could say is like, and I go to see Craig Trumbauer, you go down there, he's 75, he's got a room full of beautiful, wooden cages with all kinds of yeah. stuff like i mean he's got a, pretty, he's got pretty a rosy bow rack in his closet you know i mean it's like <laughs> he's got stuff all over you know it's so i'm like i feel like i'd be that guy you know maybe i'd have less you know maybe i would thin things out and have bigger cages and less animals i don't know but i don't know i like how things are like i don't know i i i have no problem like i keep a lot of stuff in bioactive but i keep stuff in racks i think there's nothing wrong with racks as long as you're taking care of the animals whatever you do is right you know that's Look, That's Ryan. Young, Ryan Young just said he's a lifer. He does, he's a designer lifer for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I just yeah. I don't I don't see myself ever not being in it. I, you know, I'm so yeah. Hey, listen, I feel the same way. Um, all because this kind of came into my life where I was like, you know, it brought me so much opportunity, and I I leave and I, I live and breathe this shit. You know, I really do. Um, but like, I don't know if I if I, if I could get to Craig's age. And be able to still this do still do this shit and Lily's tolerating me and all that other stuff. I'll be, be really happy. I just don't 
I think at some well, point Lily's gonna be on my bumper and be like, I think we need to be doing the Steagle route and fucking vacation this shit and like hang hang your coat now, buddy. Hang hang that lab coat and let's do the let's 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 uh you know retire the fucking experiments. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> I think it could happen, but I, mean, but I mean for me, like I haven't missed a Daytona since 1995. You know, I mean, like it's been my life. You know, <laughs> you know I mean. I mean, I told my wife, we can't get married in August. We can't have kids in August because it can't affect my Daytona trips, you know? Like, her <laughs> friends are like, is this real? And I'm like, yes, it's real. Like, we're not, I'm not missing you know, the show for, you know, we need to schedule this stuff. And I'll be you going know, to so my <laughs> first one. And I'll be going to my first one in August. Oh, you're going to love it. I don't know. It's a, I think it's fantastic. It's yeah, I so much wait. fun. Yeah. So, I, Dennis, how do you feel about Bill Stiegel, me, Gary Shabino? Marshall won't be there, unfortunately. He fucking backed out. He's the closest uh, one. And that's why I don't get it, Mark. How can you not make this happen, dude? Marshall didn't back out. He never committed. Yeah. I know. Oh, it, that's it's true. too far. It's too far for me. It's too far. How like, far is it? I'm coming. I'm it's from like a, California, dude. I'm coming from the West Coast. What do you mean? It's like a 10 hour, it's like a 10 hour drive or something. It's, it's like the 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 one uh that's, couple times that's I've like done one it. One fish song. Oh, so, listen. Yeah. <laughs> Sell, listen, sell an ultra mail. Okay, sell an ultra mail, get a plane ticket and just yeah. to Daytona, dude. You'll be That's fine. True. It's on. hard to get to. It's like a it's a full it's a full day of travel. You know? <laughs> I just I mean put, put get your walkman out, put some fish in there, you'll be good to go. Tinley's just so easy, you know. It's a it's a it's a two and a half hour direct flight, and I'm there. I can get there early the day of, leave, leave late on Sunday, you know, not not miss a take use of a bunch of vacation days. Like Daytona, you gotta allow a day for travel either like both 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 directions from here at least. Uh, it's worth well, it though. Well, let's just drop it because clearly he don't like Daytona. So. <laughs> but no, you, you, you guys definitely should go. I mean, I, I think. Oh, I'm there. Oh, no, listen, me and Bill, oh, we're we're, we're not like Marshall. Listen, we're going. It, it, it's booked. I'm there. It's booked. Um, well, well, MJ, you've almost made it before. You just didn't make it all the way. <laughs> that was fun. That actually happened twice, buddy. But yeah, the last time was probably the one, the, the one in the historical books. Uh, but man, I'm, I'm gonna be safe. I'm not going by any zoos this time. I'm going, you know, straight to Daytona, man. And I want to okay. make it happen. And I'm excited for it. Uh, but do you do you vend at Daytona, Dennis? Yeah, yeah. And what's the vending like there? I'm curious. Super hit or miss, or what? What's it? I always do better in Daytona than I do in Tinley. Like I would say Daytona is my best show consistently. I don't know that I've ever had a Tinley that was better than Daytona. Wow. wow. Damn. And that's a, I mean, that's a strong statement there. Um, and, and is it for the most part, just because there's a lot of other stuff at these shows or why do you think you do so well at Daytona? Um, I think cause it's, I mean, that's also the first, like things are fresh and, but like I, if I have a lot of Maclots and olives and colubrids, like that kind of stuff sells really well in Florida. Um, like I would say that like colubrids sell insanely well in Florida. If you have colubrids, that is the place to go. Um, it's just a good colubrid show. Um, but I'd say I've sold very well. Those other, I mean, I, and I've sold. I mean, I've had, I've had two significantly significant good shows in Daytona. One was like ten years ago, and one was two a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't know why. And I, you know, I think part of it is I've gone to the same show for. 20 some years. So, I mean, I think that's part of it um, is you get to, you have those same people you see all the time. You have people that come back, you know, site fidelity is huge, you know, being, being a regular and things like that, I think definitely helps. Yeah. Um, I mean, we usually have a big uh, Chad Scott and myself do like an end cap. So there's like five or say there's six tables, I think that are all around that end cap. So we have, we have a lot of space over there and then, you know, it's a decent setup and everybody's having fun and I don't know, it just always goes well. It, it always goes well, you know. Nice. I would say Tinley's a like a more professional show. Yeah. Um, like I feel like you have to be there because they just do a great it's a great job. It's a great show. Um Daytona's more open and like you don't have any of the dividers and whatever else, but I don't know, I like it. It's just an open, airy, easy, chill. The aisles are real wide, so you're not there's no fight in traffic, you know. You could drive a truck down the aisles, yeah. Hey, Daytona is like the land of the fucking last of the Mohicans when it comes to like OG reptile breeders, too, right? Like, I'm talking like I've heard stories of reptile shows where 
like people are drinking at seven in the morning. Like they're just fucking just like it was like an open, just almost a huge party in a sense. You know what I mean? Well, it is definitely a huge. I mean, it is a it is a party. I mean, it definitely is a party. People people get there early. Everybody's hanging out in the pool, drinking, whatever else. Like it's definitely a it's definitely a party. Um, yeah, it's just a good relaxed atmosphere where people are having fun and people are going out and. Yeah, no, I don't have anything bad to say about it. You know, I mean, you have the FW, you have to make sure you get your permits and whatever else, and make sure you do all. Now you have to have two permits or whatever you have to have. Um, but uh, how big of a pain in the ass it it is to get those? Like, what do you have to go it's through? Not to get some, those? The problem is the timing. So you you can't get it till your other one is expired, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you might do it. It might take two months to get to you, and then you've got to. And then Wayne just has you have to do a list of everything you have. You have to give him a copy of the list of everything you have. Then you have to have a copy of your permit itself. You give it to him when you check in. That's when he gives you badges. And then there's like this other import permit they make you get. And like, if you put that in there, then FWC might come around and check that. And as long as you have that, it's not really a big deal. It used to be Wayne didn't used to take it. He used to just like have it and they'd come around and check you. And I'd say then like you might get somebody that would go through your boxes or like it was more of a pain then, but now it's, I mean, it's a hassle to do, and it's fifty bucks, but it's not really a big deal. I don't really find it to be that big of a deal. Yeah. Now, I mean, the one, uh, the one, oh god, Marshall. No, I was just going to say the one thing I remember about Daytona versus Tinley. It seems like Tinley was more vendor friendly than the the times that uh, that we vended at Daytona, as far as like letting you stay in there longer. Like I just remember yeah, Wayne. No, yeah. Like Wayne running a, people out of there like 501, like everybody get the fuck out, you know? He'll do that at 455. You, know, you might be in the middle of the yeah. it's like time to go. You don't have to leave. You don't have to go Tom, home, but you got to get out of here. Like he's, yeah, he's yeah. he's on the radio kicking you out, whatever else. He, no, I would say he definitely is not as flexible as they are as some of those things. Um, He is what he, I mean, he is what he is. He's, he's nice to deal with. Like, I don't know, he, he'll call you and do whatever else, but he definitely is. He is, he has not adjusted with the time like you you know it's cash only to get in you have to send them a check no paypal no nothing like, <laughs> and, a check. and so i started so i send them cashier's checks because before you send them a check you might hold on to it for like three months and then cash it and i'm like buddy i'm a paycheck to paycheck kind of guy a lot of times in my life so you, you right know, you need to get that thing you need to cash it so i started doing cashier's <laughs> checks and send it to them and then i just try to then i'll call and be like did you get it and then He'll send you, and then pretty much as soon as he gets it, which now he's doing it a little bit differently, so you know you get it because he'll call you and tell you if he's going to give your table to somebody else. He he yeah. is he is by the book, and he is by the by the dates he gives you. So if you, if you're going to vend there, and he says you need to get your money to him by February first, you need to get your money to him by February first because February third, he might give that thing to somebody else. And that's so, what I'm sure that's what it comes down to, right? Like if that money's not there, someone else's money's there. You're 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 shit out of luck, basically. Yeah, I mean, but if you do it, you know that's how he is, and you can just adjust and you make, you know, if you just do it like that, then it's not. Again, I, it's a fantastic show. I would, I would go to it. I'll, I'll hope to never not go to it. You know. Yeah. I'm, how big I'm, is if it? I'm ninety, I want to make a trip. Huh. It's about the same size as like a Tinley. I mean, roughly same size. Bigger, I think. No. Like, I, well, he he made it into two rooms now, but he makes it so the all the aisles are very open. Like literally, like you know how Tenley the aisles are like five feet wide. Yeah. Like the aisles in Daytona are probably eighteen feet wide. Wow. Okay. Um. He he has two rooms. I would say I don't. Tenley might have more people in it. I don't know. He's. I think he claims that they have more tables, and they may just. It's it's very hard to say what's how similar they are because of the way they're set up. They're set up so differently. Yeah. Um, I would say the Daytona setup is way more friendly to like you selling stuff and hanging out just because there's more space. Gotcha. You know, you're, you're not like, you know, you, like I watch people all the time in Tinley. I'll be, I'll watch them and I see people miss me because they see a little bit of a crowd or they're trying to squeeze through and they just keep on going. Yeah. Whereas in, in Daytona, like there might be a crowd around you, but people still can get around. Like it's more, I think it's more uh, customer friendly the way it is. May, cool. may, I mean, you know, but I don't know. It's hard to say. They're just, they're so different. They're, they're, they're different. Avenue, they're different venues completely. Yeah. It's a lot of space. But if you can, you would like to take as much diversity as you can possible to your table, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. If I have it, I bring it. So, yeah. 
And I feel like that's some of the best advice I ever got in the beginning from someone who was like kind of teaching me like about the whole breeding side of reptiles, how like it's kind of smart to be diverse in a way. Like um, it just doesn't hurt. Like if you have more than just one other thing going on for you and you 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 get it down, it could actually benefit you in the, in the long run. It's just not always easy to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I also think I would say after for vending so long, I think the more tables you have, the better and the fuller your tables, the better. Yeah. So like right. if you have look if at. you have two tables and they're fairly full or set up well, you're going to get more traffic than somebody with one table. Just it, in my experience, it seems like I do better when I have more space, especially no if I have more stuff out there. It seems like people stop and look at more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nice that like I'll have like a colubrid section and then I have a like for me, the Laesis stuff, I have a lot of people come to me for olives, for olives and macalots. So I get I get a lot of people that come over asking for that. And that happens in Tinley. It happens in, you know, I've done pretty well. I wrote an article on olive pythons I put out there and stuff like that. So I've done a few podcasts and different networks doing that. So, you know, that has helped me where people just kind of seek me out and ask me stuff for that. So, right. um, and I was like that for jungles for a long time because I've read jungles for a long time. I no longer have any at this point in time. And I had about a 10 year stretch of breeding Amazon tree boas. So for a long time, I, it was like that too. Now I haven't bred an Amazon in a few years, but I'm hoping to kick that back into gear now. Um, do you, I mean, remind me, Bill, you know, Dennis for a few years now, right? You said it's been a while. Yeah. It's been more, more than a few years. I think. Did you guys yeah, have any, you, did you guys have any relationship to carpets back in the day at all or no? I think we met at a carpet fest, didn't we? Oh, cool. I think, yeah, I think that that would be a very, yeah, that would have been where we would have met probably. Matt. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That, that's exactly where I think. In fact, now I remember, uh, I think you were in, uh, when Matt picked me up, you were, yeah. You were riding with him, I think, is where we met. Yeah, yeah. so Matt Manitola is a good friend of mine, and I, if I go up to Carpet Fest in Pennsylvania, I go stay at his house. Yeah. And so I believe we came and got you, and we, we've gone out. Yeah. I think we had cheesesteaks one time and pizza one time. And that's, oh, then, that's where it was. Then, then Bill wrestles all the guys, and, you know, yeah. Bill, <laughs> that was Bill the old on Bill. the world up there. That, that was the old Bill. No. Oh, okay. I, I want to hear more about this old Bill. Wait, what? Wait, what's <laughs> going on? At least to fuck people up, or what? What's going on? <sighs> A lot of stuff. Hey, what, what happens at Carpet Fest stays at Carpet Fest, right, Dennis? Yeah, I, it's a great – there's a lot of things that happen at Carpet Fest. You see a lot a of lot, things. A lot of things. A, a lot, lot of things <laughs> worse than Bill fucking people up. I know a lot of things. You see a lot of things. Those just, those things are – it's a great way to meet people. It's a fantastic <laughs> time, and there's some shenanigans. <laughs> some shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans. Speaking of that, I saw Bruce and Tinley this past uh, – did you really? Yeah, he's a character. He's he's no longer having any of the beers, and he brought his son with him. So I like oh, that guy. Fantastic. Who? Uh, Bruce. Oh. He's a friendly guy. He's a friendly, friendly Bruce, family. You'd like Bruce, MJ. Which one are we talking about? Who are we talking Bruce, about? Bruce Zonazer. Hmm. He's a tattoo artist. Lives in PA. He had a whole bunch of boas and stuff. Not a green tree guy. Not not a trees okay. guy. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But he's been, been around the block for a bit, huh? Yeah. He's he's a, he's a character. Yeah, he's a character. Um, I like characters. Um, now, you know, we're talking about carpets. I got to ask you about the whole, you know, you ever experiencing Nido or, you know, that craze with keeping carpets. Was that ever a thing for you or no? Not to my knowledge. Um, I don't know that, you know, I don't know that I could tell you I've ever had a sick carpet bite on. So probably not with carpets. Um, you know, I, with carpet, and I've had carpet bite ons for, shoot 20 years you know up until last year's i sold my last carpet python in tinley last in in october so i mean that was my first snake so i probably haven't been without a carpet python since like 97. you don't have a single carpet python now i don't have any carpet pythons right now no i i don't know why like i have had like but i switched over to one to do these amazon so i switched the amazon you know i did the amazon thing for I, i think it's just i was looking at arboreal space and I move some things around. Yeah, that's no no different than me in the carpet, you know, yeah. carpet world too. Just I never had good luck with carpets. I had a uh-huh. I had a group for a little while, and they just I never could get them to do anything. Uh-huh. I've had a lot. I've had really good luck with coastals and with jungles. Um, I had Irian Gias or pop ones, whatever you want to call them. Um, I had those for a while, and I did not have great luck with them. Mm. Not that they did poorly. They just I just never got eggs out of them. And I had some. I had bread live for a while, but I, 
I would get them, I would raise them up, and then when they get almost ready to breed, I would sell them. I don't know what's wrong with me as far as that kind of thing goes. I put all the work in and then give them to somebody else. Um, <laughs> I did that with the regular bread line. I did that with some hypos. And I really liked them, and then just I got to the point where I was like, I'll do something different. So, I know that like, feeling, though. I mean, in a way, because I, I had, you know, I, not that I wanted to. It was just right for my kind of life situation. But, you know, I raised these Barnack scrub pythons for I know, five, I saw that. that, that five plus surprise. years. Yeah, but, you know. But mind you, like, I was like, man, like, these fucking things that this size, like, it gets my heart going. And it gets my heart going at times where I don't want my heart going. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm thinking, like, is this even, like, kind of the right move? So I almost just had a better time just raising them up and, like, putting them in Steven's hands. I'm like, all right, Steven, do your fucking thing because I'm good right now. I think, you know, I think I had a better time just raising them and enjoying them for what they were. But breeding, I don't, you know, like I said, I'm not known as a scrub guy. And, and not that. I don't want to be it. Just I don't have that energy to build that market right now. Like when Steven's already ahead of the game and he's already killing it. So, um, I, but I understand like it's how much fun it is to raise something and then like okay, put it in someone else's hands when you just basically did all the work. But I know that I, I did that the with all are, the scrubs are awesome to keep. I mean, it's but they're also they can be stressful at times. You know, this right. They're a lot, um, but they're awesome, awesome animals. But you're also you have a son that is going to be moving soon. I don't know about yours, but mine comes in here and he wants to touch everything so i'm i'm totally fucked okay because i'll tell you what like normally leo like i get him occupied i'm like i'm gonna be right back but let me go get your bottle right now when i go get his bottle he's right behind me crawling like he fucking he literally follows me everywhere Wait. now and, yeah. And, yeah. and if i and if i cage him and if i fucking put him in a in a crate not that i'm really doing that i'm just saying like if i like <laughs> if i if i put a cage he's fucking in- like he's pissed he's like dude what are you what are you doing? Like he knows when I leave now, when I cross, it's bad, no. bro. My son's almost five and he hasn't walked in like three years. He only runs everywhere he goes. <laughs> head, head first. He's a wrecking ball. He's but he will come in here and like I'll show like because I have Maclots, Pythons, whatever else. So I open a lot of stuff with a hook. And so he has a smaller hook, so he knows how to open tubs with a hook. And so he like he is he he he's, he calls. He's like, "Where's my hook at?" He does whatever else. But he loves everything. Like he'll go through and he'll he'll open up tubs and pull stuff out and just like he's fearless and he just loves it. I don't. Know, he might even love it more than me. I mean, he loves it. Has he gotten he, bit yet? Um, not really, because I don't know how my I don't know what my wife would do if he got bit. But um, <laughs> he he hasn't. But he he likes to find something. Like I had this banana ball that was having a funky shed. He will sit there. If that thing will let him, he'll just sit there and peel skin off or whatever. He, and I had to, I have a pen in here that I keep the turtles in in the winter. And I built it so he could get in it. And he'll just come in here and sit in the damn turtle pen and just hang out <laughs> with the turtles. Like he just loves, especially there's one smaller one. And he's like, this is the baby turtle. And yeah. so he he just, I think he would live in here. He told me yeah. that if I, do, if I do anything, he wants me to move the turtle pen into his room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's but that's the thing is i ended up i sold warren booth a whole bunch of cages because i had a whole bunch of those uh pvc cages.com cages um right. and they were the slide glass and they have like a thinner glass and i was like man my son is too rough for this thin glass i broke a piece doing something and so i sold those to uh warren and i ended up getting some with plexiglass fronts because i was just like the way my son is with that hook and whatever else i was like i can't have glass cages on the bottom so I've switched to drop down <laughs> Plexi because he's just too rough. He's just <laughs> I, I love everything about him, but he is too rough. It's awesome. Yours, how's your daughter with the reptiles? Is she on the same energy level as Casper? she likes like three of them? So she loved them all, and then one day a corn snake of all things. I handed her a corn snake and it like whipped and hit her in the cheek with its tail. Oh wow. And so that was like two years ago, and the world came to an end for all snakes. she was done, and that's that's it. She she was done. <laughs> Uh, but but I have one pied ball python that I produced, I don't know, however long ago. And so she has a picture of her holding that snake when she was like two. And so she, like, I don't know if you see behind me, there's stickers on everything. She's named everything in here now, which I'm like, it's kind of weird. She's gone through and made names for everybody. But this one snake is named Oreo. Obviously, it's very original for a pied ball. But um, <laughs> like, she asks about that snake every day. She wants to see that snake. She's gravid. She's like, when... She's she's more interested in when it's gonna have babies than anybody else in the world. Like so, she likes certain things. She doesn't like them collectively. She likes what she likes, and that corn and those corn snakes. I still have them over there. 
they she could if I were to throw them out the back door, she'd be happy with that. She always <laughs> she hates them. Oh man. Um since we're on the before we can forget, you know, the all the pythons, where are you at with that right now? What's going on with your all the pythons? So I've had a lot of breeding and uh but that female still wants to eat and I and this is the problem with life at this point in time. Like I feel like she's at the point right now that if I gave her like really big meat, like if I gave her like a two jumbo rat meal that I'd probably get an ovulation and I need to do it. And I just haven't thought rats out. And I've been saying that for a week and a half. We went on vacation for a week <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's gonna, it's like the other day I figured out I had some Sumatran short tails and I was like, Holy crap, it's April. I haven't even put them together. You know, and I think just, you know, this whole children and life and I'm getting ready to host the herp tags here. So I'm getting ready to host like all zoo curators are coming here in like three weeks at your house. So, it's you no know, to a hotel in the in Norfolk for a big conference. We have a day of there's a day of presentations for lizards, snakes, turtles, crocodiles, amphibians, mm. and so we're I'm hosting it here. And so just life has been hectic, so I'm just not on the bowl like I should be. Yeah, I guess like that. Um, I need an assistant. That's what I need. Yeah, I mean Marshall for well, you, 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 go on, Marshall. you got one. You got one. You'll have one in a couple years. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like yeah. Oh no, he yeah, I I almost feel like I could get him working in here now, but I don't know what would happen. I have to, I have, to I have a lock in I have a key lock on this door. So when I'm not home I have to put the the key somewhere else. So he, so he keep him out. In. Yeah. He, he he you'll be like, Where's Jasper? And he's in here sitting in the turtle pen. <laughs> um I, I'm, and real quick, when you ha were producing olives, those went pretty quick. Like those weren't stuff that like you sat on much longer. Huh? I would never advertise them, and they would all be gone by fall. Wow, about a thousand dollars a pair, like is what they sell for too. It's not a bad. I mean, a thousand a pair? That's really cheap. Was that right, or is that is that a thousand? I don't know. I think maybe two thousand. Maybe a thousand dollars. I don't know. What, I don't know what I, I guess. It's been a few years. I don't even know what I sold them for. Wow. But maybe you know, maybe they were more. Maybe they're almost like. And more of that, but they they sell really well. Maclots are the same way. Like when I make maclots, I don't advertise them; they just sell. Right. Damn. That's yeah. a good but point. but people come to ask. So like I mean, I this female, the clutch I have in the incubator. This is that female's ninth clutch. Jeez. Nine in a row. <laughs> of of uh, this is a maclots. Yeah. That's crazy. Cow. Yeah. How many eggs? Uh, thirteen. Wow. That's no, so like for me, like I, you know, if they can go, I let them go. And yeah. It's a good way because it's a good way to keep them lean. Like they, they build up fat for a little bit, they breed, then they get skinny, then they build up fat a little bit, then they breed. So I don't know. It so, seems to. So seems with, to the mac, with the mac lots, how are you just food cycling them? Like what, what's your time, what's your schedule like throughout the year and, and how you like I, to do it? Like right now I probably feed them. Well, she just laid eggs. So I, I think I've, I have fed her once since she laid eggs. Um, I have another female that's going to lay any day. Um, I'll feed them like monthly. Like I might do a, like, especially now that they just laid eggs, I'll probably give her, I'll probably give her a meal every week or every other week for a month or so. And then I'll feed her probably monthly. And then come September through Thanksgiving, I'll feed her big rats and I'll feed her once every seven to 10 days. And I'll just give her as big of a rat as I can at that point in time. And then, I'll start putting them together like around that December time, January time. And then usually like in February, I'll give them another big meal of some sort. And that seems yeah. to kick them into ovulation and then they're good to go. You keep them just like ball pythons, like the same heat and all that? Um, they have heat on all the time, um, but they, but not much. I mean, what did it set at? It set at like 87. Um, and so now I've got them in an ARS rack, like a four foot ARS rack. Um, I've had them in vision cages. I've had them in a whole bunch of different stuff. I've just, I switched a lot of that stuff over to racks just to make it easier for me to keep clean and watered and whatever else. Uh, but they do, I don't know, they do really well. I just keep them on, keep them on mulch so I can keep it kind of wet. Like I just dump, dump water in there. Keep it, not wet, but like keep it so the mulch is, is fairly right. damp and then just a big water bowl and then let them hang out. Babies are pretty easy to get, get going. <clears throat> I don't know. They don't even, they eat. Like you probably feed them the day they're born. I don't know. They they eat so well. <laughs> nice. they, they don't. You could feed them whatever you want. You could feed them frozen from the day they start. Now olives are a little bit different. Olives, 
are weird because they don't have a feeding response right off the bat for rodents, at least in my experience. So like you can lay a fuzzy in there or a hopper in there and certain ones will take it. But if you give them a quail, they will wrap it up and eat it well. Right. Um, and so a lot of times I'll try to see whoever I can get on a rodent right away, but they don't want to wrap it up. They kind of run from it. Um, but if you lay it in there, they'll come and take it. And then there'll be the other ones where I'll just get young quail, get them started. And then once I get a few meals in them, then I'll start trying to switch them over. And then I've never had one not switch. They all switch over to rodents and then they do well. And then once they're adults, they'll eat your arms. I mean, they're hungry all the time. Yeah. yeah. But uh, as babies, they're just, they just are bird eaters, I guess. They're just, they're like that. But the Maclots, those things are machines. Like, I don't know, they're an awesome snake because they just, they cruise around when you come in. Like, well, I have windows in the front so they can see me, but like they kind of, like when you walk in, they're kind of like scrubbish in some ways where they, they're like checking you out and they're looking at you. And I, don't know, I find them to be super, they're, they're active a lot. Like they've got a lot of space for what, for what they are. I always so, felt bad. I always felt bad for Maclocks because like I, there, I was on a huge Timor craze and I was just stacking Timors. And then I would come across Maclocks and be like, wait, what is that? And then I was like, well, they're kind of really similar. And I would, but I was like realizing how come nobody, works with these like these aren't like it's like no one really gives a shit and i just have feisty when they're little so people are scared of them i think but you the people that have them if you have them and handle them they do really well they calm down really well i don't know if you look on my i'm pretty sure on my instagram there's some pictures of my female from a long time ago and she's like almost blue like she's right now she doesn't look that great she laid eggs not long ago but like they're super pretty um super pretty they're uh i don't know they're neat snakes a lot of speckling a lot of like there's I don't know. They're they're definitely an underappreciated animal that that should get more love. But again, they're not for everybody because when they're little, they're bitey, and so I think that that'll take a year or so or less if you handle them more often. But you know, yeah, but they're, so they're so, are, car, so are carpets and yeah, they're they're extremely popular. You know, yeah. So so yeah, and the people that love them love them. People, right. you know, it's it's been good for me because I'm like the only gig in town. A lot of times, you know, more people have yeah. them now than before, but uh, for a long time. I was the only guy. So like, mm. that's why I keep on making. I'm, I mean, I, and honestly, I've kind of thought about increasing what I make just because I think it's one of those things that I think that eventually they won't be imported anymore, but I've never had a problem selling them. And I just think they're neat animals. Uh, I really like them. So yeah, I like them a lot. That's cool. I think it's awesome. You're working with them. You're very dedicated to, you know, at least keeping them going, you know? So. Yeah. And I had Fuscus for a long time and I got, and those are one of those things. I raised them all the way up and then I sent them to the people and both people I sent them to got eggs this year. So I never actually produced any eggs out of those, but the Fuscus, they, for me, they just never chilled out. And I was just like, I have enough stuff. I don't need somebody that's never going to chill out. So I just move them on. It's like white lips. I've done white lips a few times and I always am like, white lips are one of those snakes that I think they're beautiful and they're cool, but they get exhausting you're, sometimes. You're, Cause you're going to get lit up. That's the thing. It's always the same what? thing with them. It's psychotic. It's like chill fight. out. Yeah, <laughs> just chill out. Just like you know, because they're just nervous. You know, they're just nervous. Oh, and, and, and it's out of nowhere too, man. Because like I had a group of eight, and I I purposely held back because I didn't want to get. I loved I loved them, but it was like you said, it was it was just too much all the time. And so I was like, I'm gonna keep the most calmest pair that I have, like the ones that tolerates me the most. And even those are a fucking unpredictable time bomb, bro. Like we'll go from just having a good time where, and then it just launches, or it turns around, and just bites me for no reason, and I'm like. What the fuck was that all about? And and dude, you you get bit by that, you're bleeding for sure. I don't know most, what it most is. Teeth I think, any python? Well, yes, most teeth. Thank you for confirming that. But <laughs> yeah, you're you're bleeding for a minute. You know what I mean? Um, well, but you can't but, walk by. They want to. They want to strike everything when you're walking. Oh, by they're they're feeding. they're that they're that high strong. They're, they're they'll, super they'll... high strong. They're 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 <laughs> aggro, bro. Like it's it's like what was that all about? And like literally for nothing. Like it could be a gust of wind, and it just like makes them just turn around and hit you for some reason. Even, um, even are they or are, are these captive bred ones or are these wild caught ones? I can't. I've had know, both. Even the, the captive, captive bred, bred ones were a little bit better. They were a little better because I've gotten I've gotten some from Ryan Young, um, and they. The thing is, I didn't get to have. I, I ended up parting with them before they could even get of age to where I could calm them down. But even as babies, they were psychotic. So, I think I think it's something that grows out of them, but it doesn't fully. Like it's still always within them to be a spaz. You know, um, but it's hard to beat the beauty of one. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, they are a beautiful animal. There, somebody offered me one last week, and I actually thought about it. I was like, "Do I need to have these again?" But I'm like, 
I've had them like three times in my life and I've never kept them. And I'm just like, <laughs> Um, listen, wrap up question time. I'm going to go first and then Bill or Marshall will follow. Um, and this has just been sitting on my, you know, on my shoulders the entire episode. Cause I want to ask you, um, oh. we, we mentioned, we mentioned Ron St. Pierre's episode, right? Um, and one of the things that he said was his experience with all the emeralds that he took in and how many have regurgitated on. Him. Um, and I don't know what your experience has been with regurgitation. Um, I can't say he's far off because like what he's saying, what he's realizing is how much grain and stuff that are normally in all these rodents that could cause regurgitation. And he feels like putting a rodent that does not have any grain and just on a fruit diet could really cure the whole regurgitation thing with emeralds and whatnot. What is your take with that? What do you think that is? And first and foremost, do you think that 18 emerald tree boas that have regurgitated could all bounce back? Well, so he and I talked about this in Tinley and, uh, and talking to Heather too, which she doesn't get enough credit, I think too. She's awesome. Um, to Heather. Yeah. But uh, I don't know when he started talking about it. Like, I'm actually like he was. He didn't even tell me the whole thing. And we have a few friends that have like celiac and all this other stuff. And when he started saying it, I was like, "Are you saying that these snakes have like celiac disease?" And and I was like, "It kind of makes sense in some ways that they're not accustomed to that." Um, but I think there's also like there's the stress of life, and so. These are yeah. a whole bunch of wild-caught snakes that are in different areas. They're all outside. They're adjusting. They haven't been through a complete cycle of Florida yet. So, like, the fact that a whole bunch of them could have a problem doesn't surprise me. Um, I think if anybody's going to figure it out, I think he's definitely a damn good person to figure it out. Um, mm. I don't know. I mean, I, we got to wait and see. I don't know that I could say I agree with it or I disagree with it. It, it seemed, when he tells you, it seems pretty, seems to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, I mean, he said, I saw him post not long ago saying that he hasn't had any, since he's been doing what he's doing, they haven't regurgitated all again, which is pretty unheard of in emeralds. No, the no. fact that they all regurgitated yeah. multiple times yeah. and then aren't now and keeping food down. So something's happening. Um, I mean, it's pretty know, known so, out It's pretty known out there. You have an emerald that regurges, it's going in the freezer. Like that's like the protocol. Like, yeah, I've, no, I've only no, ever no had one back. female, I've only ever, ever had one emerald regurge and I did lose that animal. Yeah. Um, I've had, like, I didn't, it was like the second meal is an animal that I had acquired. It was probably two years old, something like that. It ate one meal, did okay, ate second meal, threw up, and then it never recovered after that. So I definitely have had that experience. Um, it was just one animal out of – that was a personal animal. That wasn't even an animal I had at the zoo. That was one of my own. Um, a, a northern, though, right? Emerald tree boat? It was a basin. Oh, the basin. Yeah, it was a basin. Ouch. So it was a basin that – yeah, it was a, a female basin that I – had just acquired new, and like I don't know, it, it moved funny. Like something was off with it anyway. Like it was just kind of one of those things where yeah, you got it, up. and it was a guy that was getting out, and I just bought. I got a good deal, you know. You're one of those things. You got a good deal, and um, and then I was oh, like, well, he, he was <laughs> also was on the way deal. out. A good like, deal, so a good was, deal, a good deal. Basin back in the day does not sound like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's probably over ten years ago too. It was, it was a long time ago. So, yeah. um. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what to think about it. I think it, you know, when he explained it to me, it made sense. I, my wheels were turning. And I was like, this is interesting. Um, I would like to see what happens with it and see. I mean, I, you know, I think, I think he's a pretty damn straight shooter on things. So I think we'll, we'll find out if it works or if it doesn't work. So um, I'm, I'm interested to see what the results are. And yeah. so far, yeah, it so seems it, like it's what, right. What was the most uh, interesting thing to me was just the numbers about how, you know, yeah. all 18 of them did it, then didn't do it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see how it how it all pans out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it. I mean, it seems like and how many people do you know that are all of a sudden have gluten problems? More people than I ever would have expected in my life now I talk to have gluten problems. So who's to say that an animal can't have that problem? So, you know. Yeah. And also, who who knows where, you know, it could depend on where he's getting his rats from. Maybe they're getting something funky, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, and mind you, too, like, you know, and, and I listened specifically what Ron was saying. And we're talking three, like, back to back to back regurges. Then he got it to not regurge. And then just to fucking test the waters, he, <laughs> right, he went to go get it to regurge again. And I'm like, wow, holy shit. 
So yeah, that's I, like that's really fucking testing it right there. That's I, nuts. I can't believe that they bounced back enough to even want to eat. You know, I mean, just I like yeah. So, but you know, also see, they're in they're in Florida sun too, and I think UV yeah. does things sometimes. You know, I don't know that every snake needs UV, but there's definitely something to. You know, I think the sun can cure a lot of things that maybe he doesn't do when we're inside. So maybe there's something to that as well. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, his wanna... his situation, be the way he's able to keep him outside, and and I think that's a completely different uh, dynamic than you have. You know, people that have to worry about keeping the humidity up and keep him in a cage, and they don't get sun. Um, well, I, I think that he, helps him out. And he he also has the thing where he he told me this one day, and I was like, it made sense to me too. Where He's like, you know, everything's being out, outside in the UV, so it's sterilizing it all the time. So, you know, the sun, which if you need something, you know, that's what you can sterilize some things with, is with UV. You know, UV sterilizes, you have whatever else. So, you know, the fact that things aren't sitting in a cage in your house and, you know, festering or stagnant, or he's got them all in wire, wire cages outside. So, you know, there's a lot more airflow. There's a lot of things. If the UV really is sterilizing like that, which is what it should do, you know, so there's just different dynamics than you would have in your house or my house. I got, I got to ask this. What's the protocol? Like, not that I want this to ever happen. Cause I love, I love the basins that you have at the zoo, but let's say you walk in and a, one of the basins regurgitates, regurgitates. What, what would the, what would you have to do at the zoo? I mean, we would, we would, we would log it and we would put it in a report. Um, and then we would tell the vet staff and then they might consult with us and say, what do you think? What do you, whatever else? And then they might, you know, we would probably be doing fecals or doing whatever else. Um, if it was, would, you, I, would you isolate it and like take it, like take it off a display and put it in another like set? Would you, or like, or would you do that? Or if it was on display, probably. I mean, unless it was, if it was just a one off, then I probably wouldn't do it. I probably wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't want to stress it. So I, right, if right. it was something that didn't look funky and looked okay, then I would probably leave it and just right. watch it. If it, if it did it more than once, then I would probably move it somewhere else. Yeah. One offs um, are, one offs do happen for sure. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it, it just depends. Like, I would, I do my best to not have anything out there that doesn't look right. Um, you know, but I also believe in, you know, I'm not moving stuff around a whole lot of times because if, if they're having a, an issue and then I add stress to the situation, I'm not helping anything. Yeah. Um, so, but we would consult with the vet. We would, we have feed cards and everything. We have a report system that goes on. So we have medical data that's anybody can access that's in a zoo. Um, right. And so we would just, we would consult with what the vets or vet tech said. And go from there and then they'd probably ask us and we would play around with it and figure out what the you know we would consult with each other and say what's best right on all right bill marshall wants to go next i'll go i'll go ahead marshall uh so back to the basins what do you know uh have those been there before you got there or do you no, know I the origin them. of them oh you acquired them okay yeah they came from the Riverbank Zoo. So they are, I don't know, you know, I've never looked up where they came from originally, where they're, so they were born at the Riverbank Zoo. Um, I probably, what are their numbers? I probably acquired them in like 2012, 2013. Yeah, so I'd say they probably had their first litter at like five. So be, being a zoo, do you have records that would eventually, where you'd be able to trace back like where the, where they were collected from? Yeah. Yeah. So we use a thing called Species 360 or Zims. And so basically with that, I can go in there. Like I could take their number and I could go in there and I can look. And there's a section where you can go in and I can go into their parents and I can look at their parents. And that'll tell you. And, and it has like where they came from, has every bit of it. I can know all their weights. I can know whatever else. And then I can go to their parents' parents and I can go to their parents' parents. I can go back as many, as many, uh, generations as there have been and i can see all of the things where they were acquired who owned them where they came from all that kind of thing hmm. so right. basically the way the way that the zoo works yeah. with all that stuff like you would know you can find out everything that ever happened yeah what, what, what's, your, what's your prediction marshall what do you think they what do you think they originated from like you think should i have no i have no idea i get like peru well, brazil bushmaster you know i but i can look i can look and text you tomorrow i'll look when i get home or i look and go to work tomorrow it, 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 but wait, hold on, Quetzal has been down in Qu Costa Rica for a while, and, and it, it could have came down from him too, right? Possibly. The annulates we have, I believe, came from Quetzal originally, and then they were born in my. But the ones we have came from from Miami. But if I if I remember correctly, 
they came from him originally through whatever it was in Costa Rica. The basins, mm-hmm. I feel like the basins might have originated out of Bushmaster now that I think about it. Wow. Um, but I have to, but there are multiple, like, there are at least multiple generations before I got them or before we got them. Right. And hold on, before we get to Bill's uh, wrap up question, what did you do with those babies? Because when, when I was at your, when I went to go visit you, you had a bunch of cool babies from those, uh, from the litter in 2022 or whatever. How the are those? Basins? Yeah, the basin babies are they? Yeah, the ba- up? So, some are, some we sent to Ari, so okay. they have them at Reptilandia, and then oh, I don't cool. know who else. I, I think I sent some to like the maybe Chattanooga Aquarium, cool, Tennessee Aquarium, whatever it is. Uh, I think maybe I, did. I don't I don't remember where I sent them. I sent I sent a few out. We have one baby. I still have one baby there left, and I've got like a three or four year old female that's pretty decent size now too. Maybe consider Traplandia Zoo next time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, what you, for, what you got for you? What you got for Dennis, Bill? Oh, I was going to ask you, Dennis. You uh, alluded to, or you said that you've got quite a bit of flexibility in uh, your projects at the zoo. So, what's stopping you from, like, what you know, acquiring something, or maybe something that you you would want to acquire, you know, in the future? Nothing really. Uh, the only the only thing that I get that I get no on is Komodo, for whatever reason, just because of cost of building an exhibit. But I just I just uh, we have paperwork in now to get a pair of parenti, so we're in the process. We build like we, I would say, unfortunately, unfortunately, we build our own exhibits, so we have to do all the rock work and all the whatever else. So oh, wow. we're in the process of doing that to two exhibits. One's like a twenty by ten by ten, and one's like a 10 by 10 by 10. So we're going to have a male and female on exhibit. We're just going to give them each their own exhibit. And that way we can move them back and forth. But um, hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of get what I want. So I really, in you know, I have to fight for a lot of it. It takes me a long time. Like, it's not like I could just say, hey, I want this. And it happens like that. I yeah. have to go through a director and whatever else. But we just finished building an anaconda exhibit. So we have a green anaconda coming next week. Um, I'm getting the female beaded lizards for the ones we have. Nice. Uh, Very cool. We have, we have this Brenty coming. We just got a Savannah. We just got a captured red Savannah monitor. Uh, I got, and so I don't know. There's always something coming. Like I, I mean, we have this big turtle oasis thing that we built. So I have a whole bunch of box turtles coming in for that. So we have like a big outdoor turtle thing that has blanding, spotted woods, alligator snapping turtles out there. And we're adding some box turtles in there. If you the get something. They're not with the others, but. If you get something in, do you have to move something out? In other words, is no, no. you find you just keep if I well, I mean, if I if I need the space, then I might. But no, I mean, we don't really move a whole lot of like. I mean, I guess we move babies out. Like we'll make a whole bunch of babies for stuff, or if people want something, we'll make things for them. Yeah, uh, and then send stuff out. But I mean, as long as we have the space, I I personally like to take over as much space as I can. So I'm always pushing to like if there's an exhibit that's been empty, like. The Prentis are going into an old sloth exhibit and a monkey exhibit that they didn't really want to put anything else in. So I was like, we'll take them. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy because I'll just keep on. I'll see an option and I'll be like, hey, we can get something else. So we just keep on going. Got the, keepers, the keepers like it. And so it always keeps it interesting and we keep on learning and we keep on making exhibits fresh and new for people to come and see and. So really, I mean, you know, to me, if you're not trying, then what good is it? You know, what, you know, I, I want to keep on doing fun stuff and, you know, we get to do rock work and we get to do whatever else. I work with concrete a lot. I work, I have a keeper that started working for me like a year ago and he's fantastic at doing rock work. And then I have a, a lady that volunteers for us and does rock work as well. So yeah. we just all do like, so um, there's so many facets of it that are fun that I don't know. It's like, it's just like never ending. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like once we do the anaconda thing and we have this Brendy thing, I'm like, ah, I probably don't need anything else. But you never know. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what I'll... If I could get some on Pelly Pythons, that would be... I had an opportunity to get some from Gavin in Australia, but I couldn't convince our director to fork out the money that had to happen. But um, if I could do something like that, man, I would I would kill for that. Yeah. The Perennies are a pretty big deal, right? There's not a ton of them. Here yeah, are, so are Omaha and Dallas bred them in the last year, or the year before, and so okay. they have so two different zoos bred them. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never even seen one in. Oh well, no, I saw one at the Dallas Zoo years ago. But as soon as I saw them available, I was like, "How are we doing this?" So we 
I figured it out. You know, just my director. Is there any? Is there any of those in, in private? Any of those in private hands or, or no? I think a the tie, most private would park. probably be Ty. Yeah. Um, Ty Park has one, but he has it on loan from Fort Worth or Dallas. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they are in private hands. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know that answer. I know that Dallas has some more that they're looking to move out. So, but it all depends on what their permits were to get them. So like a lot of that stuff, it might be out of their hands, you know, so it may not be able to go anywhere else. I, I don't know that I don't I don't know the rules on that. I don't know what they had to do to get them. Well, I gotta say, man, your situation period with revolving animals is so awesome. Like you, I mean, literally could fucking just you know say, hey, give me this, and you know you get the dreamiest fucking animal you want, and, and, and oh, it doesn't come, out of your, doesn't come out of your pocket. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and awesome. the thing is, is all those things are free. You know, it's a zoo. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're getting parentheses. We don't have to pay. We pay for for shipping them I and whatever else. And, but I mean. I have a pair. I will have a female captive bred croc monitor we got from Honolulu Zoo that you get for free. You know, like wow. these things are. You know, we have a male that I bought. With, well, I didn't buy it, but we have a male that we bought from Dan Maleri um, as a young animal. But you know, we just I don't know. We get to do a lot of cool. Like the possibilities are endless doing that kind of thing, and it yeah. makes it so I can try things here and I can try things there and I can see what I like better and what I do differently and. You know, I can use stuff from here that I that I like, and I can vice versa. And so it's like I get I have two completely different collections that I can, in some way, like I you know I have vet oversight and I have a boss and whatever else. But like really, as long as I do a good job, my people do a good job, which they do. Right. They make me look good. So that's what I always say: is you guys make me look good, I can make them look good, and then they let us do what we want. Man, it's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Two hours went by too quick. Um, for anyone out there to be on top of everything you have going on, I know you're active on Instagram and Facebook. Well, what do you prefer people to follow you at? I don't know. I, you know, I get more responses on the Facebook part than I do on the Instagram part. I don't know if that's, I don't know why that is. I feel like I post the same things, but the Facebook is m more active for me. Well, I mean, first and foremost, respectfully dennis you gotta know how to use instagram and from based off what i just saw earlier with your story you did not put the link right so i think you, know, <laughs> you might just need a little bit of coaching maybe just on instagram. well you told me you told me you would help me i My got you how to do all that stuff i should get her to help me more too i got but no, uh bill bill is more instagram than he is facebook and when i met bill he was all facebook so that's true now this guy is just mr instagram so is marshall marshall's fucking smashing on instagram too i had to fucking push both these guys into the fucking over the ledge and now they're just they're smashing it. So I think you you just need to come join the team, buddy. Come join the Instagram team. Hey, give me some guidance. I'm 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 always open for listening. I got <laughs> you. I got you, bro. And, and and you'll see me and Bill at Daytona for sure. Not Marshall. We'll um, see you there, my friends. Yeah, Marshall, you should reconsider. I think. You know, maybe I will. We'll see. He's, I'll he's bring extra motor lights for you. I'm, I'm there. When Marshall there. said, "Oh, you better, but you better be for sure, bro. Come on." <laughs> Don't fuck her. I was just about to say, once Marshall said on something, it's hard to get him to go the other route. But apparently, you just convinced him with some Miller lights. So. And, and Marshall, are you coming back for any more lacrosse anytime? Do you think? Man, um, I, probably not. My my son's decided he doesn't want to play college, so we're oh, not. No I was, yeah. Dude. So he he Is just that says that's that's where I was today. I was at Auburn all day to give. He was going to get like the campus tour and. All that kind of stuff and uh he yeah he didn't want to he just wants to go to auburn so i, I can't blame him but uh yeah but no he's not gonna he doesn't want to play anymore so i was like look if we're if you don't want to do it seriously like i'm not driving to virginia three times this summer uh so <laughs> yeah fuck so that. yeah holy that's shit. way farther than daytona <laughs> well I, I yeah i know i know <laughs> holy shit um all right, well, guys, please go give him a follow. DJM Exotics or DJM Reptiles, my bad, right? God yeah. damn it. Either way, Dennis, I appreciate you so much. This was an awesome episode. Uh, guys, give it a wrap. Give it up for the homie Dennis. It's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. See you in August, Dennis. Yeah, See you in August, bro. Have, have a good night, bro. Well, talk to you soon. Later, Big yeah, Mac. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> good episode, gentlemen. How do you guys, uh, what's your overall assessment on tonight's show? It was exactly what I knew it was going to be. Dennis is such a likable, good guy with a lot of knowledge, you know. Yep. Where do you go wrong? Nope, 100%. Um, what do you yeah. Do you got, just, yeah, that man, he just does it nonstop. Like, that's uh, that, that's pretty awesome to be able to, to be able to do the zoo thing, you know, and 
get all this stuff that that we can't you know we can't get or and you know to be able to keep it keep it and in not, that way and not have to pay for it yeah exactly have have people have people have under people. him to yeah yeah but I, I, just be, like, I just feel like he's the right guy for it you know because i when i met dennis and he was showing me around like he told me like dude my position that i have is very like like even if you worked your whole life to get my position it's not easy to get like you just yeah. have to be at the right place at the right time um and i can't imagine how many people maybe at other zoos just aren't meant to do what dennis does but dennis is meant to do this shit and he's like the right guy like he's building yeah he's his- good at it he's good at it you know what i mean so yeah i always knew when i met dan i was like dude this is a cool, cool guy to know man and um you know it's just cool to have him on the all in the tree tuesday uh segment and have him chop it up with you guys because you know i love dennis and i always feel bad because we would have episodes and he'd be like man i would really like to just hang out with you guys and talk and i'm like oh man you could come hang out whenever you want and so we had to get this episode for dennis in and, and it was a good one I, i'll have to say so um but marshall go go ahead bill i was gonna say we will continue uh we will continue with the talk in daytona yeah uh marshall we had just uh shy of 80 people tapped in tonight what do you have to say all the love and support thank you yeah thank you bill that that's it what's the mayor yeah. Have to say? yeah it was good to see everybody in the live chat you know again it just seems to, the live chat just seems to get bigger and bigger you know every week so yeah it's awesome to see it's awesome to see the growth and uh we're just appreciative and you guys, you can catch Bill at the NARBC Dallas show this Saturday. So make sure you go by, go say what up to the the big dog, the mayor himself. I'll be walking around Saturday for sure with A and W, right? Alex Warren will be in the building too. Alex, yep, Alex gonna show for me there and back. I hope. What a cr- and I'm sure Patrick will be there for like really sporadic and not scheduled, just pop up and pop and leave, right? That's what Pat. That's how Patrick does it, right? Yeah, well, Patrick's coming over Friday too. So. Oh, I'm jealous. You oh, should have me Friday. That. God damn it! All right, well let's see. Have- Go ahead, Marshall. I just say you have you having the the uh, fest at your house like as usual. No, it's not it's, a fest because I'm not there, so it's not a fest. Uh, <laughs> not a fest. It's not well, a fest. yeah, neither one of you guys will be there, so it's not going to be the same. It, it's going to be a lot lower key. Uh, uh, there's not going to be a lot of people. I'm not doing dinner. I was telling MJ, you know, with the whole thing moving to Dallas, I have no idea who's going to want to come Friday night. The vendors, people from out of town. It's going to be a new setup for everybody, and so I. This was just kind yeah. of a, a good time to just kind of take it easy, and whoever wants to come over can come over. But I'm not expecting a big turnout. Cool. Well, let's say that's nice. hey, this, this is my boy right here, man. Take care of my boy for me, Jordan Hartland Reptiles. He's excited yeah. to go to your place on Friday. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna come Friday. Real good guy. But guys, please give it up for uh, Marshall Mendez, Red Mountain Herbs on Instagram, and of course the Mayor Phoenix Reptiles. It's a wrap for these two, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night, boys. See you guys. Have fun this weekend, Bill. See you next week. Later, Marshall. See you guys. Great episode. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who tapped in. It was just one for the books. Dennis, like I said, to you know, be friends with a guy who's just dedicated and passionate behind the reptiles and has the position that he has. Really, really awesome and next level. So, guys, get the likes up for Dennis if you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to check out the sponsors in the link in the descriptions. Please go give them all the support. And if you're looking for exclusive content, join the Trap Talk Patreon family. You want to get more details on Trap Fest 2024, invite only. It's going to go down, man. So please come join the Trap Talk family. I love all my trappers. Love all the support. Thank you for everyone in the live chat. Seriously, dude, what Bill says about the live chats is so true, man. You guys you guys in the live chats make everything so live and awesome. So I appreciate all the support. Everyone who comes and just gives this network the time of day. All right. So enjoy the rest of your evening, please. And don't forget, all right. Oh, by the way, morning or afternoon, global. Trap Talk is global. I got people in Germany who are on their way to work this morning. So shout out to all my German trappers. I uh, do want to say, though, do not sleep on this man's segment. Stephen Cush has been killing it weekly, every Wednesday. Wednesdays belong to Cush's Corner, all right? And the real Python King himself coming to Cush's Corner tomorrow, Ryan Young, all right? One-on-one, Steve Cush, Ryan Young going down on Cush's Corner right here under the Trap Talk Reptile Network, coolest reptile network in the world, and that's a fact. Have a good night. Thank you so much, Dennis. It's a wrap. DJM Reptiles, 478 Trap Talk Network episodes in the books. See you guys here tomorrow with Stephen Cush. Have a good night.